And we are live. Welcome everyone to the third session of Amalthea. I don't really have much in the way of announcements other than to say that today we'll be actually rather focused on the sort of journey of the Lysithia. And of course, if you're just tuning in for the first time, the Lysithia is part of the Amalthea's fleet. Uh, but, you know, you'll figure that out as we go. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, Beckett, I believe you have the opening log. Uh, indeed I do. Captain's log, stardate 62853.4. <sighs> How do I keep finding myself in these situations? Tens of thousands of light years from home. Limited supplies. Just my crew, the Lysithia, and my driving need to get all these kids home. The, um, the Andromeda expedition was a lot more lonely. At least this time, there are more people out here with us. Well, okay. Yeah, apparently, uh, mid sentence, damn. All right, well, uh, let me finish his log for him. Let's see, where did he leave off? Do, 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 find his log. Problem, problem. Oh, no, he's back. Oh, he's back. Awesome. So, uh, I'll just start over and hopefully it holds up this time uh no you can you can start mid-sentence uh you did uh at least there this time there are more people out here with us and that's where you come gotcha off. then i'll do the second paragraph uh all of that aside the little sister is out to do what she does best we've been tasked to head to a nearby system that happens to have a world that is dominated by a very large blue ocean we will map survey and research this system and this planet long-range scans show it to be a class m which is promising only thing to do now is let the crew do their job. My confidence in, it, in them is as high as it was in the Andromeda game. In log. Very good. So I'm, I'm picturing it actually, the, uh, the little recorder thing he's using, breaking, like in that one, Star Trek V. <laughs> and then getting hucked <laughs> across the room. Uh, all right. Well, as, uh, as was requested, we're actually just going to jump straight into a senior staff meeting of the Lysithia crew. Um, you guys uh, are all present. Uh, I believe we have to do one introduction. Uh, I don't think we've introduced uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Scrim, and I believe that's you, Jester. Yeah. Yeah, I was in. Um, I was there briefly, I think, in one of the meetings. Well, for uh, you know, just just for completeness' sake, why don't you give us a brief introduction of the character? Uh, Scrim is a Rigelian. He's significantly middle aged. Kind of showing his uh, age, little lines starting to gray in a few places. Uh, heavily scarred from a very long, hard life, probably with kind of a lot of some a prosthetic limb, which he doesn't talk about. Uh, despite all this, he's actually a recent graduate of the academy. This is actually his first assignment. He's had the the midlife crisis and decided to join the academy and go off with Starfleet. And, uh, he's a doctor. But much more of a botanist herbologist than a, like a surgeon. More willing to just kind of try some homeopathic remedy and alternative therapy than it is to stick out a laser scalpel. All right, cool. So, uh, let's see. Uh, remind me, it is Margoth or Deku that is the science officer, yes? Uh, yep. All right. I am going to give you a handout. You should see a, a handout entitled Scans Handout. And that is what you know for your sensor readings. But otherwise, I'm going to let you guys run your own meeting. Uh, so, we're almost to this planet. I know you guys gave me the gist of what the long range scan said, but uh, is there anything else that we picked up that uh, somebody is holding out on? Well, there's a particular, in particularly interesting anomaly, Captain. The sensors don't seem to be penetrating very far into the ocean. It, in fact, they're reflecting back at us. I mean, the, as much as we can get in, only a few meters of sensor scan. I'd like a closer look at to see what this could be causing this. I have some ideas. It could be a particular algae or phytoplankton. All right. That sounds like a good place to start. Um, 
anything about the land masses or uh, are we there, able to scan the surface of them or no? The land masses show up, but however, there are not very many of them. At most, they are very small, rocky spires or sandbars. Uh, unfortunately, the largest of which would only accommodate a single shuttle. Suffice hmm. to say, I don't think this would be the place for the Rom uh, what's left of the Romulan crew. Interesting. Um, anything about the soil content, or do we need to get closer for that? I would prefer to take geological samples from the sandbar itself. Uh, very well. Uh, anybody else? Any objections? Are there any signs of life? Uh, Too far for really good readings. Haven't and considering it. the ocean is reflecting sensors, uh, we have been unable to detect any on the sandbars themselves. Uh, I'd right, say well, you would be able to detect that some of the sandbars and spires have, uh, you know, trees or vegetation, but yeah, you're not, like, okay. detecting birds or something. Yeah, as far as we know, the plants are not sentient. Okay, and, and uh, you're only picking up flora, no fauna? Correct, sir. Alright, well, then, looks like you get your wish, and we're gonna go in closer. Um, let's head in, and, uh, Margoth, uh, Maybe you and Ty can take an away team down and get all the samples and everything you need and then bring them back up to the research stations. Um, yes, sir. Permission to go with the away team? Uh, of course, Scrim. Uh, yes. That actually sounds like a good idea. Um, while we're you guys are down there, Hi Long, maybe you can stay up here and just crank up the sensors for the rest of the system and everything and get to mapping it? I can certainly do that, sir. Wonderful. And while we're sitting here, stuck in orbit, uh, Lenaro, how about you and Swan and any of the other teams that we can put together, uh, start putting the Lysithia back together? Aye, sir. I'm a sir, Captain. All right. If there's nothing else, do what you do best. Let's learn things. All right. So I will put us on this map here so you can kind of see the planet you're looking at. So the uh, Lysithia does, you know, drop out of warp at a dramatically appropriate time later. And you see that it is a pale blue world in pretty much covered from pole to pole in just pure ocean. Uh, you're not seeing anything from orbit that would indicate a larger landmass. So it, it does really appear that, you know, you are dealing with such small landmasses that it's, you know, not even noticeable. Um, if you would care to do an extra sensor scan uh, before heading down, you certainly may. Uh, or you I'll can... I'll definitely do one of them. Okay. Uh, if you could run me a reason science, uh, remind me, Lysithia has advanced sensors, yes? That's correct. All right, then your difficulty here is a zero, and the ship is assisting you with sensors science. I definitely have focuses for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll get the ship. Okay. I forget, do breaches do anything before they ouch. disable the system? Ooh, ouch. Uh, I'm just going to take the threat for that. Um, so, to answer your question first there, uh, Bishop... Um, you don't have breaches to sensors, right? No. No. Okay, then you're fine. Yeah, advanced sense. Ah, advanced sensors uh, work so long as you don't have uh, breaches, I believe. But I'll look that up while you guys are role playing. Um, but what you learn, Margoth, is pretty much what you already knew. Uh, you are able to get a better view of the island that you could potentially land on. But other than that, yeah, you're still having the same sort of scanner bounce back problem. Yes, Captain, we're going to need potentially to go underneath the surface of the ocean to get more better readings. Do I have permission, if necessary, to take the shuttle underneath? Uh, of, of course. Um... Tell you what, uh, why don't we call up, um, 
make sure I get her rank right. Um, oh, it's not even on there. Uh, Lieutenant Lotus, um, have her uh, pilot the craft down. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, as long as it's safe to go down there and you don't think whatever's in the water that's reflecting the sensors is going to damage the shuttle, by all means. I will definitely, we will first stop on the sandbar to take samples of both the uh, the uh, soil samples and water samples from the sandbar first, and I will test them to determine what uh, their properties are before venturing underneath the surface if necessary. Perfect. Sounds good. Out of curiosity, how far away is the Ju is the Jupiter class planet that this moon is orbiting from the? So, I couldn't find a good picture for this, but let's say if you're this close to the planet that you're seeing on your screen at the moment, if you were to literally look toward, uh, out of the screen, like towards you in real life, uh, you would see just a giant gla uh, Class T gas giant. And I'm talking like maybe, uh, how do I want to say this? You know how Jupiter was almost a star of its own right? kind of the same thing here this thing is just massive and it's a strange color for a gas giant uh by that i mean it is a greenish blue color um you of course could scan it further to learn more but uh you know initial scans simply indicate that it's a it's a ball of gas uh and it has a a, a molten core of some sort but nothing of like use per se um, and, uh, how are we looking for this planet and that planet as far as other stellar bodies, like other satellites, as far as moons and whatnot? So strangely, there are no moons for either world. Okay. Peculiar. It's definitely old for a gas giant. Yeah. And I, uh, same thing without rings and or, uh, something else caught in the gravitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, there's... oh, go ahead. Is there a signs of ice poles? Uh, no, there are no signs of ice poles. Uh, this ocean world is quite literally an ocean world. Um, there's pretty much just water. Captain, Could... go ahead. I I recommend taking three teams: uh, one for geological and ocean analysis, and two for general atmospheric analysis. Setting them down on three... Uh, the problem with that is we only have two shuttles. I'm perfectly satisfied being dropped off to set up some uh, weather monitoring station. Beckett will kind of like... Uh, make a head motion like he's thinking about it. Um, well, I'm not one to ever split the party. But... That's fine. Um, just take as much security detail to make sure that everybody's safe. I feel safe sending you down with one team by yourself, but if we're splitting everything into three, let's make sure we're covered. Of course, sir. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with sending the three teams down. Make sure that transporter teams have locks on everybody. Split it up amongst three different um, transporter rooms, so we each one can get you out individually if we need to scuttle the shuttles. Yes, sir. Miss Swan. Yes. Let's go prepare the shuttle. Right away. All right. So just as a reminder, um, there is only room for one shuttle to land on the island in particular. And I'm just going to preemptively put you on this map as I get everyone's tokens situated. Um, I so I am have... just piloting that shuttle and sort of Swan doing the aerial fly around? Or the other way around? Which one is it? I'm all for Lotus doing the deep dive. Commander Ty can stay on the island and keep an eye on things while you guys go above and below surface. Alrighty. 
All right, so let's let's figure out teams here. So the quote unquote ground team, I have Ty, I have Scrim, I have Margoth. Uh, is anyone else included in this ground team? Mm, probably makes sense to have Swan on there just so we've got all the party in one place. Okay. And I believe that just leaves out Beckett. And uh, who else doesn't have a character? Uh, McCall, you're playing Ty, Scrim, Jester, Deku, Margoth, Bishop, Swan. Who the hell am I missing? Oh, Prier, Me. Prier. Who are you uh, playing in this uh, this away team? Um, I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> Well, you, um, you could always, well, I guess I guess Beckett did order you to uh, repair the ship. Yeah. Um, I can play one of the Scorpies. Sure. Which one would you like to take, uh, take down? There's uh, Kyrissa. Uh, if I remember correctly, she's the more scientifically minded individual. Uh, she has xenobiology, anthropology, and diplomacy. Sure, we'll do that, her. Man, there is almost no good gear for anyone that's a uh, science division that isn't a physician. Yeah. Maybe next week. Yeah, maybe next yeah. week. So I'm just going to take a pad with me. At, it's no cost, and it gives me access to the computer on the ship. Gotcha. Uh, Beckett, to keep you involved, how about you run uh, one of our fresh uh, supporting characters... Uh, it would be CPO, uh, Senior Chief Petty Officer, Worsh. Okay. Uh, sounds good to me. All right. So let me uh, let me get everyone's token situated here. But yeah, uh, we'll say that uh, you all take down, just so I'm all on the same page here, um, you're beaming down, you're flying down. Uh, flying down, I believe. Okay. Yeah. We've got two um, small or two helmsmen between Worsh and Swan, so I think we'll be fine flying down. Excellent. All right. So uh, you guys fly down uh, into the atmosphere, and it's a it's a very smooth ride. Uh, your initial dampeners just make it seem like this is just another day traveling about the depths of space. And uh, you sort of crest through a cloud and you see just the expanse of blue that seems to stretch on forever. And eventually, uh, after you fly for maybe a good 10, 15 minutes, you just barely spot a sandbar, much like you see on the screen at the moment. Uh, this is your landmass that has been pointed out. Uh, you do maybe a flyby or two and then very carefully uh, you begin to settle the shuttle down onto the sandbar. Um, so whoever is actually doing the flying, I need you to do me a control and a con, please. And the difficulty right. here is a one. And you do have one momentum at the moment. Cool. Can the Can other we... con person uh, assist? Yeah, uh, You may certainly assist, yes. The control Just con. Figure a way of uh, getting more momentum. May as well spend that momentum. Three right. dice. Oh, you got an assist from Worsh. Okay. Mm. okay. So you did get uh, two momentum, and uh, you can either give me that two momentum to get rid of the complication. Or there will be a complication. Uh, well, first I'll use untapped potential to see if I can roll for extra momentum. Okay. Nope. Uh, yeah, let's spend the momentum to erase that complication. Alrighty. So as you begin to settle the shuttle down, you realize that you maybe picked a initial spot that uh, maybe wasn't quite solid enough to support the shuttle's weight. Uh, but luckily, with Worsh pointing out that, uh, you know, maybe if you move 10 feet to the left, uh, you do eventually find a stable patch of ground, and the shuttle touches down and comes to a complete stop. 
And yeah, just let me know how you proceed from here. Um, uh, Ty will thing. go up first. That sensor task I did earlier, that was a success. Mm -hmm. Since the difficulty was zero. I have uh, personal momentum from my all fingers and thumbs talent. Okay. Just uh, just keep a track of that. But uh, yeah, Ty, you're going out first. Yep, just a uh, tricorder in one hand, phaser in the other, just on the lookout for any threats. Okay. So you uh, pop the back hatch, and almost immediately uh, when you step down onto the beach, it's almost like stepping onto Ryza. It's a very balmy, pleasant, say, 70 degrees, maybe 75 uh, for you centigrade people. I think that's, what, 20-something, 30-something? It's pleasant. Um you know, summer, a pleasant summer yeah, definitely day. Definitely 20s rather than 30s then. <laughs> gotcha, yeah. I can never do the math in my head fast enough. Anyway, point being, it's a, it's almost tropical. Uh, it's There's a nice, cool, uh, constant breeze coming from over the horizon. And the trees that you see around you actually uh, look rather familiar for Ty. Uh, because she is a human. And Ty, I would like you to roll me a reason and science, please. Uh, difficulty two, please. Um, I have field survival for focus. Could that count? I'll let it apply, yeah. Cool. Very nice. So, what you're going to notice, Ty is that these are dead ringers for palm trees. And you're, you know, you, you run a tricorder scan, and yeah, these are palm trees. Lieutenant Margoth, please come here. And and M Lieutenant Scrim. Uh, very well. Commander Momo, I'll turn to Les, Lieutenant Swan and say, uh, I'll hand her some uh, collection samples and say, please gather uh, soil samples while I see what the commander wants. I've got jars and tubs as I walk out of there. Oh, we can get so much algae here. Hmm, is that slime on that rock? Excellent. The two of you are far more experienced with planetary science than I, but my tricorder reads these as Earth-based fauna. Could you please confirm? Uh... That would be quite odd, and I'll definitely take uh, secondary sands to confirm. Okay, so Margoth, you're going to be approaching this with a reason science of your own. Still difficulty two. Scrim, you're approaching this from a medical perspective, so a reason medicine for you. Also difficulty two. I'm guessing, is it a uh, botany? Botany would definitely apply. Uh, my, I'm going to use my testing a theory talent, which lets me roll an additional d20 since I performed a similar task previously. Okay. Alright, so Scrim, I mean, might be the case, you're not really sure, but uh, Margoth, with your uh, mud momentum you get from that, you do indeed confirm these are palm trees from Earth. This is quite peculiar, Pe peculiar, Commander. They are not only just similar to palm trees, but I am detecting a very low variance in DNA-wise. These are actually are palm trees. They are of the same genus. Mm. I have no explanation for why they would be here. Perhaps the uh, preservers came out here to so drop they... something else rather than uh, uh, indigenous Native Americans. A single island seems above the uh, observer's notice. Perhaps there will be other answers found. Uh, please assist me with deploying these pl uh, planetary survey markers. All right. So, uh, as you go about setting up your markers, taking soil samples, things like that, uh, I do have to ask, does anyone have the constantly watching talent? Yep. Didn't know that was a thing. Uh, to be perfectly honest, Worsh has no talents. He is talentless. He is a talentless hack. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nice beard, though. He's got that going for him. I do not. 
Okay. <laughs> so we'll say about 30 minutes to an hour as you guys are working. You know, you there's a subtle change in the breeze. Like if it was coming from the west, it's now coming from, say, uh, the southwest. So it's a very subtle shift in the wind. Um, but you look up and towards the horizon and you see that approaching you is what appears to be a, a thunderstorm of some sort. But uh, it doesn't end there. Uh, as you all start to, you know, look in that direction, maybe start thinking about returning to the shuttle, it's almost instant, but rushing out from the ocean are a about 20 or so individuals, and I have a handout for this. So, let me show you the individuals that are rushing at you. Show to players. So, uh, to give you kind of a textual description of what you're seeing, uh, these are humanoid-shaped figures, and they almost remind you of a mermaid if a mermaid's tail was terminated in tentacles rather than a fin. Uh, billowing bioluminescent fins spread from their backs, and it has two arms and intelligent-looking eyes, but has no mouth to speak of, and every single one of them is armed with a trident that is made of an unknown material and is crackling with energy. And they immediately surround both you and your shuttle, and unless you start shooting at them, they have blocked off your return. I mean, Swan will definitely draw her phaser and sort of back up close to Creaser. Because if you're going to be in a fight, you want to be near the giant scorpion lady. Mm -hmm. I deploy my body armor and draw my Naginata. All right. So just so we're all on the same page here, you guys are taking defensive stances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, Commander. I motion everyone to get behind me. Um, do I see someone who is more ornately um, bespeckled, or perhaps wears a commandering uniform? Uh, no, they appear to all be. Uh, for lack of a better term, they appear to be the same ornaments. Um, or at least... Well, you know what? Let's, let's do it this way. Why don't you roll me a insight and command? And the difficulty here will be a three. While he's looking... Is there any sign of technology beyond their, like, kind of simple weaponry? Uh, it, there does not appear to be such on their person. I have no idea. Yeah, so yeah, you're you're just not picking out any differences between these individuals. Okay, um, I'm going to motion everyone just to put their phasers down. What's happening with the thunderstorm? Is it still stationary, or is it, or is it moving towards us? Uh, it is moving towards you. Okay. Oh, almost as uh, if it's following them? Possibly. Possibly, but you can't say for sure if that's the case. Or they're moving away from it. I will take a couple steps forward gingerly. Um, put my uh, retract my Naginata's blade, so it's just a simple quarter staff. Mm -hmm. um, I am Commander Su Tai, representing the United Federation of Planets, the, the USS Lysithia. Are you able to understand me? So one of the creatures, and I'm just going to put one token down, so I don't have to do like twenty of them. Um, one of the creatures does step forward, but they jab at you with their trident, trying to drive you back uh, into a tighter group with the others. I'm going to take that as a no. Hmm. We, we do not mean you harm. Um, are, have we trespassed? Um, are we infringing on... We apologize if we are intruding. So, I have to ask this of uh, Swan at this point. Mm -hmm. So, Swan, what would you say is your number one scientific focus, if you had one? Uh, uh, stellar cartography. Stellar cartography, okay. And Margoth, what would you say is yours? My what? My uh, focus? Your number one scientific focus. 
my number I have got research here, which kind of covers a lot of stuff. It does. All right, so let's say you're good at research. Uh, Scrim, what would you say your number one focus would be? Herbalism. Herbalism. Okay. Uh, Actually, that, research is kind of like my general one, but I've got two, one, two, three here that deal with, uh, you know, planetary-based focuses, exotectonics, geology, and survey. So I'd say surveying geological stuff is my primary one. Okay. Uh, Chrysa, I believe, is a xenobiologist. Yes. And mm-hmm. Wersh, uh, Wersh is a is a pilot, so I don't think he really has anything. Um, but Chrysa, mm-hmm. why don't you roll me a reason science or reason medicine, and let's make the difficulty here a three. All right, I'm going to use that momentum for a third die. Okay. And xenobiology applies? It definitely would. All right, you get the three successes you need. Uh, Chrysa has the foresight to check and see if these creatures are communicating in a different manner because they haven't made any verbal or otherwise noise so far. And what you detect, Chrysa, is that they are actually communicating telepathically with one another. You're picking up some form of esperating or some sort of indication that it is a mind slash telepathy based communication. Commander Ty. Yes, Chrysa. It seems they are communicating uh telepathically or some sort of mind to mind communication i see um i don't believe any of us are currently telepathic are we to my knowledge, to my knowledge. none of you are okay, okay. Well, the, the uh, telepathic uh, one is currently in the amalthia <laughs> yes um i'm just going to th- this is going to sound weird i'm going to sort of enter a bit of a meditative state um, and think of my home planet. Um, think of the ship that brought us here, the Lysithia. And then think of the shuttlecraft ride down really hard and see if I can't direct it at the one who is currently prodding me with her pointy stick. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll me a... I would think this could be a presence plus command. And the difficulty here... Uh, I'm going to spend some of the threat you gave me. I'm going to make this a difficulty four. And I'm also going to make the complication range a 18 to 20. Uh, Sorry, what was the... It was... Presence command. Presence command. Oh boy, I'm going to have to roll two crits on this because I don't have any momentum to... You could give me threat. Could you bring your determination? Yeah, I think Determination was a good one to burn here. Let's see. Um, I think I'll I'll use the Determination, be patient, and wait. Move only when ready. Okay. So two free successes is what I'm guessing you're using it for? Yep. And I'll take one threat for one momentum, or one die. All right. Uh, no, because it's determination, uh, you actually have to spend two threat. Very nice. That'll get you a momentum. So, you think all of this towards the individual in front of you, and... For sake of me not having to continually talk in pictures, let's say that you hear, you don't really hear, but your mind hears a voice. And it's a very alien sounding voice. I know that's an oxymoron, but it's it's strange. It's, it's almost musical or lyrical. Uh, and 
you know, you as you think this, the creature sort of says back, so you can speak with your mind. And only Commander Ty hears this at the moment. But Ty, you're having to concentrate really, really hard on these images to communicate your sentences. So you can just tell me what you're saying, but, you know, in your mind, you are literally communicating through pictures at the moment. Um, it is not easy for me to communicate with my mind. Not uh, well trained for it. Apologies for trespassing. If you want us to leave, we can leave. We do not wish to interfere. And the creature uh, does lower their trident just a tad, uh, looks to their fellows, does a sort of round them up motion uh, above their head, and the rest of the individuals begin closing in. Still tridents at the ready, uh, and this creature thinks back to you. You come from the sky. You will be coming with us. Uh, did, did, did that work, Commander? I think we might be uh, uninvited guests. Oh, really? Do I really want... Uh, um... I'm going to... Oh, dear. Yeah, Are you going yeah, to be this, able to think a sentence before they round us into the police wagon? We I could attempt say, to beam out, Commander. Yeah, I was going to say, you could attempt plan. to beam out. You, But I'm going to say you guys as a whole only get one more action before uh, you are effectively rounded up. Commander. I, I would say attempt to beam oh, yeah. out. If, yeah. if we beam um, out, we'll be leaving a shuttlecraft on a world without warp technology in gross violation of General Order 1. We can destroy. We can remote destroy that. That's not a problem. It's also remote pilotable. Yeah. Commander, uh, tie to Lysithia. Emergency beam out now. So up on the Lysithia, uh, Beckett, uh, whoever is sitting, uh, let's say Kyrano. Uh, Kyrano says, uh, "Sir, I'm getting a very garbled transmission from the surface. Not really able to tell other than the fact it's the away team. There's some sort of electromagnetic interference from a storm that's approaching them." Do we still have transporter lock? Uh, no, sir. We are currently having difficulty maintaining a lock on them. Wonderful. All right. Uh, Karano, see if you can clear up that signal and figure out what it is. Um, uh, bridge to transporter room one. Chief here, sir. Uh, I'm being told you've lost the lock on Commander Ty's away team. Uh, I, it's intermittent, sir. I, I have them one moment, but then there's some sort of electromagnetic discharge, and I lose them, and I have to reestablish the lock. I can still try to oh. beam them out if you want, sir. Uh, how about a no BS probability of getting them all back here in one piece? 50-50, uh, uh. sir. Okay. Once you get closer to 70-75, um, no matter what, pull them out. Understood, sir. And then Beckett will turn back to Karan to uh, uh, Carano, mm -hmm. and yeah, let's figure out what the hell they're trying to tell us. Okay. Uh, so let's handle it this way. Um, you can either try to decipher the signal, or you can do the transporter task, but you don't have time for both. And they can't see the mermaid, so... Do the option that lets us get kidnapped by mermaids. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> because we all one drowned. Alright, so I uh, had another Arcadia incident and I was muted. Um... Yes. Uh, what I was trying to say was, uh, I, Bishop brings up a good point. Uh, I'm going to go with the signal first to find out, because it could be something as simple as, hey, Captain, we found Atlantis. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to have Serrano try to clear up that signal, 
and I will support him with doctor's orders. Okay. So you're going to be assisting with a presence command, or I guess in your case, a presence medicine because of doctor's orders. And okay. if someone could get Kyrano, please, uh, he is rolling a control and a science. And the ship is also assisting, if someone wants to get the Lysithia, the Lysithia is assisting with communications and science. Um, I've already got the Lysithia up, so I'll do theirs real quick. I can do Kyrano. Okay. Uh, the um, overall difficulty said, is a four, though. You said for the Lysithia comms and science? Comms and science, correct. Okay. Uh, one more dice for Kyrano. Oh, it was a full thing, not an assist. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I rolled a Lysithia. Did it not go through? Not yet. Nope. Let's try it again. Comms, science. Yes. As, as they're doing this, uh, Margoth is going to lean into Swan and say, I'm not sure about you, but I tend not to be able to breathe underwater. Okay, I've now rolled um, mine and the Lysithia's, and it's not coming through. Hmm. Maybe try uh, oh, oh, there oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, dear. Well, son of a bitch. So, um, uh, yeah. With, uh, with two complications, uh, unfortunately, you guys aren't able to uh, unscramble the pattern. In fact, uh, the complication is going to be that as you attempt to unscramble the pattern, you lose contact with the away team completely. And that is uh, represented by the fact I, that... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I could spend a, my determination uh, to re-roll mine. Right. Um, Actually, no, you might want to save it for getting us out later in the session. There is that, but I'm recalling a rule that, and I could be wrong, but I recall that if you're assisting, you cannot spend your determination or momentum. You're, you're just assisting. So unfortunately, I think you're stuck with the two complications. Um, but, you know, this, this just makes the session more interesting. Um, so back down on the planet, uh, your call up to the Lysithia goes unanswered and i need to know very you know plainly are any of you resisting being herded onto uh let's say that uh someone in the back like two of these individuals uh they appear to from the water bring out what appears to be a flat surface it's a metal surface um it's discus in that it's it's flat on the top and maybe slightly curved on the bottom and it's large enough to fit all of you, but it's a very tight fit. And I need to know if any of you are being, say, belligerent or otherwise resisting being prodded onto this platform. I am always, always belligerent. Pro pro probably not resisting, but Swarden's going, uh, they, 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 they do know we can't breathe underwater, right? Uh, good thought. I'm going to think of that really, really hard. Okay. And... And your response you get back is uh, laughter of some sort, or general mirth, general almost mirth. like they they find that funny. Malicious laughter. <laughs> uh, if you want to know if it's malicious or not, I'm going to need a uh, insight command or an insight con. That's an insight command for sure. And uh, the difficulty here would be a two. Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay. Have they t tried to take any of our weapons? No, they uh, they don't uh, seem to be taking anything on your person away. But uh, yeah, with that complication, Ty, you think they might have malicious intent? Just a little bit. Okay, my phaser one has the hidden one quality. I'd it like does? to hide it on my person. Yeah, r type one phasers have hit the hidden quality. Oh no, I'm confirming it does. It sounded like you had the, an inflection at the end, like it was a question. Yeah, I do that sometimes. 
So yeah, I'd like to hide it on my person. Okay. Right. Okay, if if I believe that there is malicious intent behind that laughter, then I'm going to make a quick hand signal to everyone that prepare to make a run for the shuttle. So and I let me let me very quickly draw on this map, and I probably should have thrown more tokens on here so it's easier. But uh, let's say that uh, let me pick a color that'll show up. Uh, so let's say if you guys are on this island, uh, so let's say your tokens are vaguely on that shore there, uh, your shuttle is over there, well, it would help if I was on the right layer. Uh, let's say your shuttle is, let me draw it in a different color so it actually shows up. Uh, let's say that your shuttle is this red X and between you and that red X, you could run all the way around the island. Um, there is about, we'll say, maybe 20 meters of water. That's probably not about a good distance, but we'll say 20 meters of water. And you guys on this side of the island, uh, you're being prodded onto this platform, which I'll draw in purple. The platform is this magenta circle. All right, so no, we're, we're not going to be able to make a run for it. Um, can I discreetly scan the platform to see if it has any sort of atmospheric generation things? I will certainly allow you to do so, yes. Uh, roll me a reason medicine. Uh, difficulty two, please. And Walter, I did see that. I have made a note of it. No problem. Uh, that's why I typed it in chat, just so that way it's there. Scanning for oh. so good news, bad news. Good news, yeah. Actually, it seems to be a uh, some sort of atmospheric sustainer. Uh, you're not really sure how it works, but you know, based on the very quick scan you're able to get before you're pushed onto the thing, uh, you realize that this probably is going to keep you alive somehow. But given, you know, how quickly you're pushed onto it and sort of shoved into a group, you're not really able to determine how. So, Commander, it I'm scanning and detecting some sort of life support systems. May keep us alive somehow. All right. I, I revert my grip from a, an overhanded, from an overhand thrust type attack just to a relax on my a more relaxed grip on my uh, quarter staff and I will begrudgingly get on the platform okay so uh, once all six of you are on the platform uh, one of the we'll say the same individual that you were talking with Ty uh, sort of moves forward on their uh, tentacle leg things however you want to flavor it and tap the yeah, sort of scuttle. There's a good word. Uh, they scuttle forward, tap the edge of the platform with their trident, and a almost glass-like sort of bubble forms around all of you. Um, if any of you are claustrophobic, you're probably feeling a lot of that right now, but you hear oh, a... No. I, I, I just realized, because Chris is a pretty big scorpion, so a couple of us probably had to hop on her back. Well... Yeah, there's enough room for her, and then you guys are, like, maybe in between her legs um, on either side. But, yeah, she, she takes up most of this bubble. Um, but, yeah, a, a glass dome or a glass bubble forms around you, and the platform begins to sink into the water of, well, ah, along with the rest of these creatures. And it is at this point, we're going to cut to the Amalthea crew and see what's going on what's with going them. On? So... Uh, on the Amalthea, uh, you guys are uh, more or less overseeing repair work. Uh, you guys are sort of making sure that uh, what repairs are being done are, you know, not having any problems. And it is at this point that, Rizazo, I know you had a theory about the Klingons. Uh, why don't you tell us about that now in character? <laughs> no, I'm just... Uh, it's... That, well, Commander, the Klingons, Klingons are cloaked outside sensor range. If we fire a 
warning shot with phasers. It might encourage them to communicate. Hmm. Um, as the the only Klingon in the crew. Yeah, that, that was uh, about to say. Mertron all sort of immediately turned to Gortig and say, would that be wise? Uh, I'm gonna guess no, but uh, I don't yeah, I don't think that that's going to be a good idea. Klingons, okay, Klingons. Just double checking, because uh, I was planning to just contact them and give them the chance to talk. I think that would be the best bet. Plus, if there is only one of them, especially it, <clears throat> out of character, it was just a, like, Burrell bird of prey, correct? Correct. <clears throat> so Gortek will kind of shake his head and... Unless the commander is a complete and utter idiot. One Burrell bird of prey against, well, even our weakened little fleet would be suicide. And I say Klingons, off to them. And Klingons are never afraid to die, but they're not suicidal. We, just because we're not afraid to die does not mean that we actually want to do it. That's what I said. Oh. Anyway, um, Helm, Helm, open a channel to the open a channel standard Klingon frequencies. Uh, Opening channels. And while he's doing that, can I try to get a scan of or a uh, like an exterior picture of it to see if there's any like house markings on it? So Open it's the still yeah, you can't. Oh. Um, oh, so, that's right. Yeah, I was going to say, if that's you right. had some form of technology or techno babble that would let you see through a cloak, I would allow um, it. Well, that I absolutely do, but the Amalthea has no sensor, so it doesn't help any. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the Ophion probably could do it, but not the Amalthea. Uh, Mathurin will just wait until the comms open and then go to the cloaked Burrell off our starboard bow this is captain Savik Merthrin of the USS Amalthea all right and you get a reply and showing up on your hollow screen is this fine individual <laughs> and I uh, like him he says this is captain Jamun of the IKS Gokoka where is it that where we are that? I are you wearing <laughs> never mind um, yes, I wear sunglasses. I realize this is odd. Be that as it may, uh, we are currently somewhere in the Gamma Quadrant, about mm, ten years' travel from the Bajoran wormhole. Ah, so then the Pata I have manning my sensors has not gone infirm. Very well. Very well. We yes, um, humbly request question. that we... well. He's he's gonna talk over you. Oh yeah, um, I'll let him. I'll let him finish. Okay, yeah. Um, well, then we humbly request permission to join your flotilla. I have to run it past the admiral, but I doubt he'll have any objections. Question though: Why were you in the wormhole with us? And he does that sort of hearty belly Klingon laugh. He goes. <laughs> Well, you see, we are all members of Klingon intelligence. We were shadowing the Romulan scum that stranded us all here. Yep, and uh, Merlin will sort of like make the subtle sort of brief mute. Mm -hmm. Klingons have an intelligence division? Yes. Doesn't every government have an intelligence division? They're not known for their subtlety, but... Mm. To shake. But just because you have never heard of a Klingon commando does not mean that there's not actually Klingon commandos. Personally, I just Given think the that means they're, they're good at their jobs. <laughs> this exactly. Is a good point. Yeah, Klingon intelligence, they're either terrible or absolutely amazing. Given the fact they failed in their mission spectacularly and stranded us 40 years from home, I'm leading to terrible. Right, well, um, unless you want to do the honors yourself, I will go inform the Admiral that we have guests.
So how are you so finishing you... the conversation with Jamon is the question. Because you did just sort of put him on well. mute. Oh, whoops. Uh, yes, yeah, so unmute. Mm -hmm. uh, very well. Uh, unless you want to do it slightly differently, I will send the word out to the fleet to let them know you're friendly and go get the admiral for you very well and he shouts something in Klingon off screen and if you had sensors you would be able to detect that uh, his Burrell bird of prey has decloaked but since your communication systems are working and you have the rest of the fleet there minus the Lysithia you get the information that the uh, IKS Kokoka has sort of swooped in uh, near the Amalthea and has taken up a holding pattern. Alrighty. Uh, Mithrin, Mithrin to Admiral Skull. Admiral Skull here, go ahead. So, um, you're probably going to be a little upset that I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, we have some Klingon guests with us. I'm a little more confused than perplexed at the moment. I'm more confused than upset at the moment. What? How did they get here? Apparently they were tailing the Dederodex into the wormhole. Uh, I've invited the captain to join us in the ready room in a few minutes. Very well. I'll be up there shortly. Skull out. Skull out. Alrighty. And uh, it is at this point that we're going to cut back to the Lysithia away team. So let me... Grab all those tokens. All right. So I'm just going to put you here because I'll reveal the map uh, as it becomes uh, dramatically appropriate. So you all sink beneath the waves enclosed within your protective bubble that had been provided for you. And again, if you're claustrophobic, if you weren't before, you definitely are now. Uh, because all you have above you is this seemingly flimsy sort of glass-like structure that is protecting you from the depths of the ocean as you sink deeper and deeper into the waves. And all around you, uh, these creatures, these humanoid-shaped creatures, they, uh, if you recall, I said they were bioluminescent. Um, you see them because of their bioluminescence, and you see that all of them are sort of guiding this bubble uh, down deeper into the depths, and towards the seabed. And you travel for travel. a good 10, 15 minutes of just silence, perhaps, as you try to take in the situation. But I do. Uh, if, if anything, you know, Swan's got her nose pressed up against the glass. Yeah. I'd like to be taking readings of uh, the water as we go by. Okay. Um. Margoth, I'd like you to roll me a Reason Science, a Difficulty 2, please. I believe my talent comes into effect again. It does. Alright, two successes. So you're going to find out something very important. You find out that the reflective nature of the water does not apply once you're deep enough. In fact, it's almost like you've gone through some sort of barrier and you're detecting life all around you. Like a tricorder only can scan so far, but you're detecting these creatures that are escorting you. You're detecting that jellyfish, uh, jellyfish uh, shaped creature that's swimming on by. Uh, the schools of what could be fish. And hell, you're even detecting farther out at the extreme range of the tricorder. Uh, what might be a whale? Je Jellyface, one of the lesser-known Batman villains. <laughs> <laughs> um, could be a whale-like creature, or could be an actual whale? Ah, uh, you would have to get closer to find out. I would like to actually see if I get it. Um, how close are the uh, Ursula's Ursuloids to the, um, the bubble? Uh, I would say I that... Know, let, let me go look at what the term is for octopus mermaids because i know it, the internet has decided on a name for them oh i'm sure the internet has um, i'm sticking with ursuloids okay let's let's you know i like ursuloids we'll go with that until told otherwise <laughs> um 
So they are surrounding you, not like compressed up against the glass. They, I would say that there's a a trident or two distance between you and the nearest um, Ursuloid. But the group of them is more or less surrounding you in almost like a protective pack, if that makes any sense. Um, are they close enough to get like a scan of their DNA? To you see certainly it, like, can, yeah. I want to scan to see it specifically if it matches that. Cicalia, that's it. Cicalia. Okay. Uh, let's see, Scrim, what would this be for you? Yes, I had a Deviant Thought account when I was young, sue me. I think we all did. Uh, let's see, Scrim, hmm. this is going to be for reasons, because you only have a tricorder. Um, let me ask this. Do you have Quick Study? I be- the talent, I believe I do. Yes, I do. Because if I remember quick study properly, uh, you do not uh, incur difficulty increases for unfamiliarity with the creatures, correct? With, uh, with a medical procedure, if I'm doing a, like if I'm doing a, a tonsillectomy, I've never done tonsillectomy. I don't know if it would apply to biology. I would say that given the nature of your circumstances, that you are in a diagnostic sort of procedure, mm-hmm. which technically I would say falls within the realm of this talent. Um, so the difficulty was going to be a five uh, due, to your, due to your infamiliarity with the creatures. With your talent, it is only going to be a three. And you are rolling an insight medicine and you have one momentum to speak of at the moment. This is... Could Kyrissa assist uh, with her n- noticing that Scrim was uh, doing a scan? You may certainly assist, and Kyrissa has the xenobiology focus, which would apply here. And we only also have one... insight medicine. Uh, also insight medicine, yes. Uh, uh, could instead of spending by an extra dice with the momentum, could I instead spend it to be comparing? Commander Ty, who is a human's DNA with them, have an advantage. I think great advantage is two. two. One momentum, one threat? Yeah, we could do that. And that would lower your difficulty to a two. Biology is a focus. Biology definitely would apply. Nice. You get two momentum. So, Scrim, yeah, you're going to find out something also very important. You scan find out. Scan tie, scan them, scan tie. Mm-hmm. You know how in Star Trek Voyager, the Voth and humanity share certain markers? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the same sort of thing here, but with creatures that are decidedly not Voth. Interesting. Congratulations, Commander. It's a squid. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you care to elaborate? Um, just like the palm trees, these races seem to have similar DNA ancestry to humanity. This is peculiar, but thank you very much for the information. I wonder if this was you know, a I... colony of some kind, or, or hmm... I what I seem to remember something about whales and aliens. And, nope, nope, had it. It's gone. You know, I'd really like to see the size of this uh, migratory bird that brought all this here. The giant celestial space sparrow. That's a swallow. A five-pound bird European. cannot carry a one-pound coconut. Oh, don't get me started. I'll quote the whole scene. <laughs> I apologize. No, Focus, please. On top of that, Commander, it would seem that the sensor reflection was artificial in nature. Uh, it, As we have gone below it, it has stopped. This could be some uh, defense that they have constructed. It could even possibly re- be related somehow to their Esper qualities. Or it's a defense mechanism from whomever or however they got here in the first place. Well, well, as you it really uh, seems like this planet is set up to avoid attracting attention. 
as you get to that point in the conversation, I can move you onto this map. So, uh, as you continue to talk, uh, we'll say the most observant of you realize that you've actually reached the floor bed and you sort of crest a, an underwater hill or a mountain and you see nestled in a valley between uh, other rocky spires, you see what is unmistakably a city. You're seeing lights, you're seeing some form of underwater vehicles, you're seeing a lot more of the creatures that are around you. There is no doubt in your mind looking at this that you are looking at a civilization. A fairly advanced one, because you're pretty sure that those signs are holographic in nature. Okay, well, hopefully we haven't messed up the Prime Directive too badly. Indeed. And I'm secretly dreading the conversation I'm going to have with the captain when we get back to the surface. As we're being led to the city, I'd like to be entering in the geological formations I see into my pad mm -hmm. and generating simulations based on that data to see whether or not they're natural or artificial in nature. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll me a... Let's do a control and a science. And the difficulty here would be a one. Oof. You got no idea. And in fact, the complication is that your tricorder, for whatever in inexplicable reason, shorts out. Oh, lovely. They do that in humidity. I think this is a little bit more than humidity. I'll pass in my tricorder just to help out, just in case. Thank you, Commander. Next time I will test my equipment before bringing it along. See that you do. An away mission of hazardous nature is not the time for Starfleet equipment to be failing. So, speaking of equipment failing, let's cut back to the Amalthia. Uh, let's see, where would you uh, be meeting uh, the Admiral there, Merthrin? Or... Really, the reverse. Admiral, where would you be meeting Merthrin? Uh, he said ready room, so ready room sounds like a good place to go. Ready room, we shall go. All right, so Merthrin, you're there. Let me grab Skull. There's Skull. All right. And there you guys go. Sorry, so you knew that there were Klingons for at least a day, and you did not you did choose not to choose inform me. Before. I decided that the we needed to deal with the Romulans first, and they seemed content to stay at the edge of sensor range and not do anything. Fair enough. But I, while I understand that this is you know, anything that need, anything that sh could impact the sh safety of of the fleet should at least be brought to my attention, even if you made the right choice. And Mathurin just sort of gives a nod. Now, where is this Gah? What was his name? Gahoka? Uh, no, that was the name of his ship. Uh, ah. The captain's name is Captain Jamung. Ah. Where is this Captain, Captain Jamung? I should be beaming in. So, it is literally just then that there's a chime at your door. Come in. So, in steps, two individuals. The first is Captain Jamun. The second is Mr. Garrick. And uh, Garrick and Jamun step in and Garrick says, Ah, gentlemen, I ran into my colleague in the intelligence services in the hallway and I thought I'd let myself in. I, I do trust that that's all right. And sort of raises an eyebrow, looks at Skull. Garrick, why are you still on the Amalthea? Well... You see, I sort of slept through my alarm and no one really checked in on me, so here I am, stranded like the rest of us. Congratulations. Uh, would you like me to find a sh would you like to find a spot on the prom on our uh, shopping decks for a tailor? Oh, I'm sure I could certainly lend my services in the tailor department, but and and Garrick looks back at Drake. Uh, Mr. Drake, would you care to join us perhaps? I think it only fair that every member of intelligence be present for this. Uh, Drake is just standing outside the door waiting for someone who actually has rank to let him in. 
Come very, in, well. very well. All right, so Drake, you step in too. We'll just shuffle some tokens around here. So yeah. Well, this is a colorful party. Jamun, you know, another hearty cling on left. He says, <laughs> oh, you must be the Admiral I've heard so much about. And he actually goes up to you, uh, Skull, and he extends a, what appears to be a fairly benign, respectful handshake. I will grasp it in the warrior's handshake. Yeah. And Captain Jamun, I'm afraid that I have absolutely no idea who you are. Ah, that means I've done my job well. Uh, he's uh, with Klingon Intelligence, Admiral. I, yes. So, next thought, next question. Why are you here? Well, I was following the Romulan Ptah that uh, we had been following since they had left Romulus. We did not know of their plan to strand you or destroy you, whatever their motive was. Had we known, I assure you, we would have destroyed them with little hesitation. M M Mithrin, think goes to question the wisdom of a Burrell taking on a Dederodex, but thinks better of it. Yes, it would have been a glorious battle, I am sure. And now you're here with us. And my understanding is you wish to join the... Well, yes. I'm certainly not going to be able to take my crew home. Not uh, not alone, anyway. Last I checked, our fuel reserves will only last another month or so. A month? Okay. And what's the shape of your... What's the status of your ship in general? Oh, we actually survived the... I guess you would call it transition rather well. Uh, all 15 of my crew survived intact. And we only experienced minor structural damage to our right wing. Very well. Uh, well. Side note, Admiral, with the Callistos out on a permanent patrol rotation, we might actually we might even be able to house their Burrell in the Amalthius hangar. I believe that would be a good place for them. At least we might be able to get that strut fixed up quicker than if we had to repair it in zero G. That's for sure. Uh, Merthrin, if you wish, that's your call to make. I mean, assuming, assuming, of course, your crew wouldn't mind that. I, I, I'm not actually familiar with how long Burrells are meant to ha have tours of duty. <laughs> Oh, let me assure you, this old rust bucket of mine has been kicking around since the days of your Kirk. Hmm. That I make him like they used to, I guess. Hmm. I believe you have a similar vessel in Starfleet, uh, the Miranda class. <laughs> Fair enough. They, they are hardy little things. And uh, Garrick speaks up and says, uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I must ask something that has been on my mind. Uh, Captain Jamun, why is it that you wear protective eye covering? And Jamun, another hearty laugh, he says, Well, let me show you. And uh, he takes off his glasses, and you see, actually very similar to Jordy, uh, his eyes are almost completely white. Uh, there are scar marks that trail down either eyeball, and it's very evident uh, almost immediately, now that he's shown you his eyes, that these glasses are actually the Klingon equivalent of Geordi's visor. Or at least that's how I'm justifying the fact that I found the coolest Klingon token in the fleet. <laughs> Fair enough. I shrug and just... That's... I'm assuming you got that in glorious com... Ah, yes, it was during the triple invasion of 2321. I'm just not going to mention that. Bloody blind There's just an fighting. awkward silence, and then we move on to the next topic. <laughs> uh, Drake, Drake makes a uh, uh, a small noise that sounds like the little triple chirping. Jamon, like, he twitches for a moment, and then he realizes it's Drake and says, Ah, 
You replicate that sound well, perhaps too well. Hmm. It comes in handy when you're trying to sneak into Klingon facilities. <laughs> oh. So, where do we go from here, gentlemen? Captain well, Jack. currently... We yeah, currently we're waiting for the Lysithia to finish its survey of the nearby moon to see if it's suitable to put the Romulans on, and if not, then we move on to the M-class planet ten light years from here. And we cut back to the Lysithia away team. So, uh, by now, you guys have reached the edge of the city, and you are guided along what are basically roads just underwater. Um, there, you're also seeing that all of the buildings have these rather fancy looking tubes that connect them. Um, so it does appear that some of these creatures, whatever they're called, the Ursuloids, the Cilia, um, they do have some buildings which are supposedly, you know, airtight and they have means of transitioning between them. But what really catches your attention is the fact that you're being led to the heart of the city. Uh, where the tallest buildings are. And, uh, let's see, Swan, you're human, yeah? Yep. And Ty, you're human. I would like yep. each of you to roll me a reason and a science, please. And if you have any uh, focuses in history or anything relating to archaeology or, uh, say, uh, architecture. Say would you like Worsh to also roll because he is a human also? Oh yeah, uh, I forgot uh, reason science, right? Uh, reason science, yes. The difficulty is a two, and I'd like you to each roll it separately because I this is you know whether or not your personal knowledge uh, is coming into play here. I'll take one of those momentums. Okay. So Ty succeeds, Swan succeeds, Worsh succeeds. All three of you are going to recognize the golden structure at the at uh, sort of the temple or the tall skyscraper, well, I guess sea scraper, that uh, you're brought towards. You're damn sure you've seen this architecture before, and you know exactly where you've seen it. And this uh, is Kai. Does that look like? I think it does and this is confirmed by your uh cilia friend uh swimming up in front of the bubble and to all of you so you all can hear it in your mind they say welcome to atlantis and this is where we're going to take our break so uh if you guys could be back in about uh five to ten minutes uh do remember that i do keep the stream going during break so you know don't say anything you wouldn't normally uh but yeah brb in about 10 minutes and we will be coming back to swan immediately bombarding them all with questions <laughs> all right i will brb uh yeah i'll be right back too but i'm just saying if swan doesn't ask them where ariel is or king trident uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. And I am unmuted for you guys on Twitch and YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. Always love sharing my games with the world. 
Mm, excuse me. Uh, just hope that uh, you're having a good time. And, uh, of course, we uh, love to hear your feedback, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, one thing I did want to remind everyone uh, is that uh, if you have Amazon Prime, or t and that means you also have Twitch Prime, or if you have Twitch Prime normally, remind, uh, this is sort of a reminder that you can freely subscribe to any channel of your choice every month. You just have to manually put it in every month. I'd love it if you spent it here, but hey, if you've got another channel you want to support, here's your reminder. Uh, other than that, uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the session. I'll go ahead and unmute myself for the rest of the guys. And I'm back. I'm back. Welcome back. So, um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. Mm-hmm. I am. Doing all right. Doing well. Enjoying it. Cool. So have people seen the uh, Ghostbusters and Transformers crossover figure? I have not. Oh, Is yes. it any good? It looks actually pretty good. Ecto-1 as a, I, I assume, an Autobot? Probably. I just want to know when we're get, going to get the uh, the Constitution class Transformer. I mean, yeah, I know they did it in the comics, but I want an actual toy. As would I, but that would be very difficult to do. Well, um, yes, please. I'm guessing this conversation started from the Ecto-1. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't know how they'd actually pull off a Constitution Transformer, but... The, the difficulty with that is... Hasbro is the Transformer company, whereas Star Trek has like other. I think it's I forget who has their license for their toys. Paramount and whoever owns Paramount. So it's a whole thing. Like Paramount has the rights to the movies, but CBS has rights to the show. So until... I don't know who's the rights like merchandise though, but I know that I was at Mega Bloks had their uh, had Star Wars, Star Trek for a while, which is unfortunate because Mega Bloks aren't as good. Right. Yeah, Diamond Selects does it from has it i think they just play fast and loose with licensing to whichever toy company does whatever a uh, please i think that they actually had a galileo shuttle christmas ornament at one point which is was well, an odd choice but... hallmark usually has a star trek christmas ornament i have one it's the nx01 all right, uh, I think I've heard from everyone, though, except for Deku, and I think Beckett was here. I think I heard uh, him. I said I was here. 
Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Well, let's just get, go ahead and get back started. Alrighty. So, Alrighty. going straight back in. Yep. You have I, just I, been I, told. I plan, oh, go ahead. Atlantis, the, the, the Atlantis, like, the, the historical Atlantis, the, and, and, hang on. Is this like, did, so were you there around the time of ancient Greece? Or like, did, did you meet ancient Grecians that... And you and you can actually can't understand anything I'm saying because you don't speak using words. Mm. Lieutenant Swan's so just Lieutenant. gonna like sit, stab a feet in one place and just be frustrated. Uh, uh, yes, Commander. I want, to ask so, I want to ask so many questions, but at the same time, we're technically still under Prime Directive, and I've sort of bent that enough already. Uh, uh, question uh, for uh, you're right. Human. Mm. What's Atlantis? Uh, who, who was asking that? It's Scrim. Right. Me. All right. All oh, right. Um, it, it it's a legendary city from Earth's uh, history. A highly advanced civilization in the Atlantic Ocean. City sunk. The island city sunk beneath the waves in a calamity. It's one of those fabled lost civilizations that people search for for centuries. And is this actually it, or is it just every city under the waves? Atlantis? Considering I mean, the mar considering the relationship we've found between D various DNA markers, this could have been, it. We have a lot of questions that still need answering, and we have to be very careful with how we ask that. Ask them until. Are we still in the bubble? You are. Uh, I was gonna say. So at this point, you guys have brought been brought inside this temple, and it's more or less a uh, a form of airlock. Uh, it's it's one of those things where I'm trying to figure out how to describe this properly. Um, you know how in some of astronaut training they have these sort of habitats on a shallow riverbed or a shallow lake bed and to get up into them you have to swim down uh but then you swim up into these things and there's air there if that makes any sense yeah yep. yeah so it, it's the same principle here uh your bubble is brought up into air and once you are more or less situated inside this new atmosphere the bubble opens with a small hiss and recedes into the rest of the platform and the four or so cilia that have come with you uh, are now not prodding you with tridents but they are you know using them to guide you further into this sort of temple as it were you say temple what the what do the markings look like uh, I would say that they definitely do not look like any Earth language any of you would be familiar with, and the Universal Translator is not working. It hasn't gotten enough data to provide a translation. Uh, Kresa, do you have any insights? I'm wondering if they maybe use the water while they're underwater to communicate, but as for us to communicate with them, nothing. Well, the good news is that as long as you, you know, are prodded along a little bit, like if you're not resisting, uh, about two minutes later, uh, you're brought before these grand golden doors, and they are flanked on either side of armored cilia, and without even hesitating, they each reach over and pull open the door, and inside is what I would describe as a grand royal chamber. Uh, it's a cross between a gothic church and a throne room. And waiting for you at the end of this long blue carpet, this deep blue carpet, is a larger uh, cilia uh, who is colored in purple. And I didn't want a hue shift because it didn't really come out with uh, the art properly. Uh, but I will put their token uh, on the screen so you, you can interact with them. Um, but you're led up to this larger individual, and you see that they are dressed in what is clearly some form of ornamentation. 
Uh, they have more jewelry on. Their trident is uh, pronged with five prongs rather than three. So I guess it's a quintrent? Whatever. Um, and most prominent is the fact that when they speak, it's once again to all of you. And they say, my name is Queen Morwenna. And I welcome you again to Atlantis. <laughs> um, upon hearing the name Queen, um, I will bow as... Okay. And she says, you need not bow. If I understand what I have been told correctly, you too hail from what used to be known as Terra. That is correct, Your Highness. I am Commander Su Tai, representing, um, and I am human. We are representing the larger United Federation of Planets, of which Terra is a member. I see. And how is it that you come to my city? Well, that's a funny story, that. We... We do not wish to trespass, Your Highness. We sit are explorers. And we really should not be here. As we... As even though we share a... Um, long uh, ancestry, we have a... A very strict code of non-interference of uh, those civilizations who have not yet reached uh, star travel. Unless that is how you got here in the first place. So she kind of motions to the side at one of her retainers, and the retainer kind of sidles on up to them. And, of course, they don't say anything, but you get the, uh, you get the idea that they're probably talking. And eventually the queen comes back and says... I believe you are the members of the ship that is in orbit, correct? That is correct. Hmm. Well, I think that that shall be your answer about whether or not we're spacefaring. As all this is happening, Morgoth has been crunching the numbers on his pad, and he's just like, but the power needed to, to leave Earth orbit let alone the surface of a, something this size as the whole city would be astronomical. How, how did you manage it? What power is it? Hmm. Well, I think you'll find that if our scans of your vessel are correct, we actually share rather much the same technology, or at least a derivation of such. Mentally, I breathe a sigh of relief. Your, your Highness, we would be very... We have come to this part of space unexpectedly and would greatly appreciate any information you are willing to share. Likewise, we are perfectly willing to share any information of what Terra has become since you have departed it. Well, perhaps we should focus on the big ticket item. How is it that you did arrive here? Um, so, you know about... Do you know what a wormhole is? She kind of looks at her retainer. And then after a moment, she nods. It is a aperture within space and perhaps time through which passageway between two points exist. Correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were traveling through one of those when we got mm, sort of kicked out the side. Sabotaged. We, we were traveling through the wormhole when it was sabotaged by an enemy force. The results were violent and unpredictable. I see. And now we're kind of stranded. Well, then you will the find strand. that our... I hesitate to call us species, as my understanding from my advisor is that we share a common ancestry of sorts. But the point I'm trying to make is we arrived here at similar circumstances. And she again looks to her side, nods very noticeably at the retainer, who then does a very deep bow, scurries off, and the queen says, I have asked my retainer to bring forth an item which I believe will interest you greatly. Uh, queen Moren, Mor Morwenna, if it's not too much to, to ask, might I, uh, might I request communication with my ship? 
they are most likely very concerned at our sudden disappearance. So yeah, let's cut back up to the Lysithia. And yeah, uh, you guys on the Lysithia have been doing your damnedest to try to figure out where your away team went. But the moment they went below the surface of the water, their life signs vanished. Vanished, not... Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, we would be spending all of this time trying to get a uh, sensor lock or something to see if they're alive or not. Okay. So you're running continuous scans, you're, you're trying to hail on all frequencies, and it comes to the point where... Uh, what's his name? Sorry, I'm still learning names. Uh, Lenaro. Um, Lenaro, let's say you're on the bridge for this, since, you know, you probably would have been called up to the bridge in some capacity. And, uh, let me just take a very quick look at your focuses. Okay. So, uh, Lenaro, if you could roll me a reason and a science, please. And the ship will assist you with sensor science. The difficulty here is a two after accounting for your advanced sensors. I've got the um, okay. Do I have a focus that would apply? You do not, unfortunately. Then I'm going to use that momentum for a third day. Okay. Two successes. So, you don't detect the away team. You detect their shuttle. The shuttle's where they landed. You're having no problems communicating with the shuttle. Um, the storm at this point has passed. Like, the, the thunderstorm has passed the area. The electromagnetic interference is gone. You can talk to the shuttle. Um, but what really catches your attention, and no one else had noticed this until right now, there is a metallic object about the size of a runabout that is sitting not that far away from the Lysithia in orbit. Captain, I'm picking something up uh, relatively close to the planet from a, uh, in between us and the planet. It's a metallic object. All right. Um, Sparja, yellow alert. All right. So, you know, uh, klaxon sound <clears throat> as the bridge lights turn to a yellow. Um, open hailing frequencies on everything. All right. Channel open, sir. Uh, unidentified ship. This is Captain Michael Beckett aboard the USS Lysithia. Uh, please respond. They're not responding, sir. I am able to confirm that they received it, though. Hmm. Uh, unidentified ship, uh, is there another way that you would like to communicate with us? So, the vessel, whatever it is, uh, begins to power up its engines. Sir, they're powering engines. Yeah, I see that. No weapons lock yet. As far as you keep your eye on it, and... If they make to uh, make any run towards the shuttle or towards us, uh, be ready with the tractor beam. All right. Well, the good news is that it decidedly does not make a run at you or the shuttle. It instead goes on a perpendicular path to each of you and jumps to warp and disappears. Lovely. And we cut back down to the uh, the queen. It is at this point, after answering maybe one or two more questions, that the retainer returns. And I think it's probably safe for me to say that all of you are going to recognize what the retainer is carrying. It is, unmistakably, one of the orb boxes of the Bajorans. Of the Prophets. That's... Unexpected. Very peculiar. So the uh, retainer very gracefully sets it down before the queen, and the queen says, This orb 
is responsible for bringing myself, or not myself, my people and the city to this planet. Do you know where it is from? We are familiar with the origins of these devices, your highness. There, there are several of them that have been, and they are linked to the inhabitants of the wormhole that we were traveling through. The, lo the indigenous population of the nearby planet known as the Bajoran calls them the Tears of the Prophets. Hmm. Then it is quite the coincidence that you traveled through the same wormhole and arrived here. That might actually be why we arrived here. Wormhole needed to exit somewhere, and so it emerged close to the orb. Or the wormhole could have one time emptied out here and has since moved in the Gamma Quadrant. Hmm. Um, may I? And Swan sort of holds up the tricorder towards the orb. Queen just sort of gestures with her hand, please. Yeah, and basically she's just going to do a quick scan and see that, sort of see how it matches up against known stats of other orbs. Okay. Reason science, difficulty zero. I'll uh, just double check I've got a focus. Pretty sure I do. Uh, oh, no, actually. Does the orb have a name? Orb of time? Orb of prophecy? Oh, well, those already exist. Yeah. Well, yeah, those are examples. Uh, so you get two momentum, which, remember, you can spend to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, Swan, you're able to confirm this is a genuine Tear of the Prophet slash orb. And to answer your question uh, about what the orb's name is, the Queen says, We have always referred to it as the Orb of Transition. A suitable name. Um, let's see. Because the real question is, how on earth did, well, hmm, bad choice of words, how did this thing end up on Earth? But Bajor is like half a dozen sectors away. Yes, we have, we have a lot, as we are getting on good terms and we've proven that General Order 1 does not apply here, Your Highness, we have lots of, we have plenty of time to catch up. I would very much appreciate being able to communicate with my ship, please. Ah. Well, I have no issue with this, except for one perhaps pressing concern. Your ship, tell me, what is its emission frequency? What band of... <sighs> you must excuse me, I'm not really technically minded... Uh, and she looks at her advisor, and again, there's one of those silent conversations. She says, My advisor wishes to know at what frequency do your sensors operate? Um, I can give her those specs. Swan sort of looks at Ty for permission. I'll nod. Yep, and Swan will sort of call up the data pad and just list the sensor frequencies. And of course, the advisor, there's another side conversation, and the queen comes back and says, Ah, well, then I'm afraid your ship is about to experience firsthand why we have the dampening field up. And we cut back uh, to the ship. What? What? Uh, let's see. Planet. So, it's been maybe 30 minutes since your mysterious visitor uh, vanished. But, uh, Lenaro you're detecting something coming in at long range at warp. Captain, we have incoming. Uh, aggressively? On screen. All right. So on screen is the following uh, configuration of ship. Uh, it does not match any on record, however, uh, scans at this range would confirm it is made out of the same material as the earlier metallic craft, though obviously this is much larger. Interesting. 
apparently it sent for its big brother. Yeah. And unless you do anything to the contrary, big brother is going to drop out of warp and is going to assume a position a few kilometers away from the Lysithia. Uh, we will stay at yellow alert and we'll put up shields. Okay, yeah, I, I was going to say yellow alert, I think standard as shields go up. I believe so, yeah. So Svarja... But we will do that and we will try to hail them again. Okay, so Svarja opens you a channel and says, uh, channel open, sir. Unknown vessel uh, of larger proportions than the last. This is Captain Michael Beckett of the Star Starfleet vessel Lysithia. Uh, do you care to chat? Sfar just says, uh, Sir, I'm detecting a buildup in their forward arrays. Uh, wonderful. Um, unknown vessel. We are here for exploration, not for conflict. Uh, perhaps you care to talk instead of attack? Their answer comes in the form of a green lance of energy that streaks towards you. So let me uh, go ahead and roll for that. Yeah, two successes. Uh, so let's see. So uh, the resistance of the Lysithia is five, yeah? Uh, I'm going to look right now. Uh, oh, you it just has scale. It does not have resistance. Uh, if you don't have a blade of armor, your resistance is your scale. Okay, so then five. Okay. So in uh, that case... Rugged Oh, go ahead. Rugged design is repair time, not uh, resistance, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so the good news is that you take zero damage to shields. However, you do suffer a power loss. So you, you lose a small amount of power as this thing uh, strikes your shields. Uh, Sparja? Um, let's make it to where they can't do that again. Take out their forward weapon weapons array. Sir, do you want me to do what you give me shit for every day, or do you want me just to disable them? Uh, actually disable them this time. Noted, sir. Uh, if someone wants to grab Svarja, uh, Svarja is rolling a control security, <clears throat> and the ship is assisting with weapon security. And uh, let's let's have you decide this, Beckett. Would you think she would use photons, or would you think she'd use phasers for this? Uh, phasers. Go with the scalpel, not the sledgehammer. Okay. Then the difficulty here is a two. Well, let's see. Uh, let's say she'll aim specifically for the engines. So let's make that a difficulty three. Yeah. And uh, you said... Uh, daring and security? Uh, or control, control security for her. Alright, I got it. Um, she'll spend one of the momentums to get a third dice. Okay. And applicable focus, starship tactical systems. Oh, yeah. Of course. Well then. Uh, let's say... Determination. Yeah, I was gonna say, does she have a value you think you could tap here? Uh, I do. And that value would be, if they don't go down, hit them again. I like the value. You may reroll. What's the Lysithia uh, rolling? Uh, the Lysithia is rolling a weapon security. Um, so she rerolls everything or just that one? As many as you'd like. Uh, she will reroll everything? Come on. All right, Lysithia assists you with one. All right, I rolled it, so give it a second. For whatever reason, every roll is taking forever. All right. <sighs> I have a feeling the moment I start saying something is when it's going to pop up. 
Yeah, I was going to re-roll it, but I'm sure as soon as I start re-rolling, it's going to pop up. And go. And... So we'll test that theory. Yeah, I was going to say. All right, I've now rolled it twice, and it's still not popping up. So if somebody else wants to roll it for her, for whatever reason, my roll is I'll give it a go. All right. And now on the rolls, I'll have multiple crits. <laughs> oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, there, there we go. go. All right, and I was oh. right. Nice. Very nice. Five Very successes. Nice. Yes, five yeah, let's go with successes. That one. Uh, six. Well, oh, yeah, six for Lysithia. So you get three momentum. And yeah, uh, go ahead and roll me your phaser damage, which for you, I believe, is seven challenge dice. Uh, yep, that's what the sheet is showing. There we go. Very nice. So, uh, I would say that you are going to be able to do some damage to their shields, but would you like to spend any momentum on getting rid of resistance? Well, let me say this, because you used phasers, you have versatile two. So what would you like to spend your versatile two dice on, or two momentum on? Hmm. If I do penetrating... Okay. Or whatever it is. Uh, it's uh, piercing, but same thing. It's, uh, uh, it's phrasing, I guess. Yeah, phrasing. Um, um, it's two resistance for one momentum. Okay, and that's what versatile gets me, correct? Uh, versatile is two bonus momentum that is not saved to the pool, so it's pretty much use it or lose it. Oh, gotcha. Um, shoot, and. Uh, I, I want to do that one, but I'm afraid that I'm just going to blow this ship up. Well, let um, me say this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I will not blow up the ship if you spend both of your bonus momentum on getting rid of resistance. That sounds good. Let's do that. Okay. So, Sfarja, uh very uh, tactfully aims the phasers at their engine block. And the forward arrays power up. There's that sort of hum, and the phasers fire and it strikes the craft's engines. And immediately on the view screen, you see all of the running lights and other uh, sort of signs that the vessel has power. You see it flicker and sort of list to the side. As Sparger reports, I can confirm I have disabled their engines, sir. Wonderful shooting, Sparja. Uh, and uh, Beckett will stand up in that Picard style and straighten his, uh, his uh, uniform jacket. Mm-hmm. Let's open another hailing frequency. Let's see if they want to talk now. All right. So as that's happening, we cut back down to the city. And I would say all of you have seen this happen because the queen has called up a hologram in the air above her. And you have just seen all of that occur. And the queen explains, We do not know their intention. But every attempt we have ever made at leaving orbit has been, shall we say, waylaid, or perhaps the better term would be outright destroyed by what we believe to be called the caretakers. Rather ironic name, but all we know is that they make travel in this area of space difficult. Oh boy, that's gonna give the fleet a lot of trouble. Do you have any specifications on their vessels, or their technology, or have they attempted to communicate at all? Really, the only reason we know they're called the Caretakers is because a passing spacefaring species of unknown origin, we honestly never really spoke except via audio, and I think that by now you would think that her saying that is odd, but uh, they indicated that they knew of these caretakers and that they would be looking into it. But that was over two centuries ago. I hmm, wonder if it's the same caretakers from Voyager. I don't think so. My understanding is that was a very singular species. A pair that were, that sadly have passed on from this plane of existence. Mm. I'm wondering yeah, if I'm wondering this might be a drone fleet. Hmm. Well, 
doesn't concern us much since we're leaving well, this space. At least the Lysithia seems to have been able to deal with it. Hopefully it won't be bothering us much. Do you know if that ship was uh, average one of their vessels? Small? Large? That would be one of the medium-sized ones. Do we ha- do you have a way for us to communicate with their vessel? She motions with her hand and says, "You may speak free- f- ah, you may speak freely, and your ship will hear you." Oh my goodness! And Swan will go over and sort of open up a channel. Uh, away team to Lysithia. Lysithia, Lysithia here. This. It's uh uh good to actually hear you are you guys okay and by the way we've been attacked uh yes we saw that commander ty here sir we are aware of the situation and have made first contact with an intelligent with an intelligent species down below the surface technically Mm -hmm. second contact uh i I side i give up jessamine swan a side eye look saying i'm Handling this. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So then you were in New Jersey right now, correct, Commander? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? So you are currently in No Jeopardy. No, sir. We are all safe and accounted for. We are in the presence of Queen Morwenna of the Atlanteans, and yes, we are aware of the share. There is a shared history here. Excellent. I look forward to hearing the report from you. Uh, do they happen to have any information on this ship that is currently sitting in front of me and has fired upon my ship? Only no, only that they are known as they are colloquially called the caretakers. Uh, they have been thwarting their attempts to leave the system, and ever since they arrived here so, a few thousand years ago. And before you ask, yes, they are in possession of faster-than-light travel, so the Prime Directive need not apply. Wonderful. I'm glad that uh, you thought about that on your first contact. Um, well, uh, learn what you can as usual, and let me know if you need any help. Otherwise, I will keep an eye and take care of these caretakers. They have had no contact at all with the caretakers. They've been rather uncommunicative. So perhaps a more aggressive action may be required to learn what we can here. Very well. It's a shame that you're down on the planet and not beaming over onto their ship right now, but we will learn what we can up here. You do the same down there. Yes, sir. Tie out. And the, uh, the queen, uh, once the channel is closed, says, I understand now that you arrived here with a fleet, yes? That is correct. We are roughly, I think it was, what, two light years away from here? Correct. So. Yes. How large is this fleet? We have, mo- uh, we, have, um, we have we have a few ships sorry. at our disposal. Um, you'll understand if I choose not to divulge the, our full tactical situation at this time, Queen. I believe that's understandable given the circumstances. I ask because I believe this presents an opportunity for the both of us. If your fleet is, shall we say, more advanced than our abilities to get into space then you might be able to deal with this caretaker problem for us. That is uh, that is something that we is beyond my call to make, Your Highness. Uh, we have uh, several captains and a admiral above us who makes full command of, who takes command of the fleet. However, it is our it is the Federation's nature to offer humanitarian assistance where possible. And so I believe that such an offer would not be ref- would not be refused out of without very good reason. Very well. And she motions on the other side, like all of her retainer stuff has been on the right side of her. She now motions to the left, and a pink tinted uh, 
individual comes up and uh, the queen says, my handmaiden, whose name I'm trying to desperately find in my notes, uh, my handmaiden, uh, Lena, shall go with you as the representative of the Marissa. Oh, you cut out there. Uh, where did I cut out? Representative of. Uh, representative of the Marissa. And I will, I'll put that in chat so you know how to spell it. That is a very oh, that's a very kind gesture. Our gesture. I will need to seek approval from my captain in order to bring her aboard. Uh, Commander Ty to Captain Beckett. Beckett here. Uh, the Queen wishes to make uh, first contact with Admiral Skull uh, regarding the this caretaker situation. Uh, she suspects, or she wishes our fleet's assistance in allowing her species to once again uh, reach space travel unmolested. Uh, she wishes to bring aboard an emissary. Uh, I see no issue with this as long as, well, you have uh, Dr. Scrim and Sarissa there to make sure that all the uh, appropriate preparations can be made for the welfare and safety of this ambassador? Of course. I shall ensure that proper quarantine uh, procedure is taken of, is under is under effect, both for our safety and hers. Excellent. And uh, inform this queen that she has my word I will return her uh, ambassador to her as safely as I can. I'll just look over my shoulder at the queen. The queen nods. She understands, sir. Uh, Very well. We will, we will be making our way surface side sometime soon, I suspect. But we'll keep you... Excellent. We stand ready to be informed. All right. So back up in orbit, uh, after that conversation comes to a close... Sfarja is running... Well, you know, let's uh, let's have uh, Lenaro, since uh, we actually have an engineer on the bridge. Uh, Lenaro, uh, if you could roll me a insight engineering, please. Difficulty two, and the ship is going to assist you with sensors engineering. Um, so actually, the, I guess it's difficulty one. I was, I was just going to ask that. <laughs> do I have a focus? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, I'll grab the ship. Uh, the ship is uh, sensors... Engineering. Got it. Okay, so I've rolled. I need to stop rolling. <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, the the challenge dice macro came through no problem, but when it's involving the sheet, it yeah, it locks up for whatever reason. Yeah, for whatever reason, I can roll challenge dice all day long. So, mm. but I—I I mean, we've already got the success. Yeah, plus I mean, one you've already got the successes. So. so even if it's a complication, I'll just take the threat instead. Um, okay. So, Lenaro, you realize a few things. The first, there is no atmosphere on that ship. There are no life signs. In fact. You're pretty sure that this is entirely a drone ship. Captain's looking like this is a drone ship. I'm not picking up any life signs, atmosphere, anything that would uh, indicate any um, inhabitants on the ship. Hmm. That would explain why they're not very talkative now, wouldn't it? Um... All right, well, Mr. Lenaro, please learn whatever you can about this uh, this vessel and try to give us an upper hand the next time we need to uh, engage with them. 
Um, how does the interior of the ship look? Do you think uh, yourself and maybe a security team could go over in EV suits? There actually is no interior. Does not seem to be any interior, uh, Captain. Well, that rules out <clears throat> reverse engineering this thing. Very well. Um, scan the ever-living crap out of it and figure out whatever we can from it. Yeah? Aye, sir. And I will point out, and you do have four momentum, which you could spend to ask me questions. I also have studious. Oh, well, then you get two for the price of one. Uh, all right. Um... One of the weirder ABBA songs, that one. <laughs> it, you know, it comes in handy. Um, what is the uh, power system? Like, what is their uh, power supply? They appear to be based on Tetrions. Um... What is what kind of weapons do they have? They have Tetrion-based weaponry, which might explain why you were uh, receiving a dampening effect when you were struck by their, uh, for lack of a better term, d their disruptors. Got all of Tetrions. Um, what else should I ask? You should ask if uh, if it's currently maintaining communication with whatever control nodule is or node that, is control. That's a good question. Or any like systems you could like beam aboard to study. So we'll go with: uh, Is it maintaining communication with like a mothership? Because you spend the momentum, I will answer that truthfully. It is. It is communicating with something that is approximately ten light years distant. Or at least so you gather. In fact, I'm going to say that with two for the price of one, so you would be down to two momentum, I believe, um, you actually, working with Hylong, are immediately able to coordinate that the other system that you were considering for the Romulans might be the source of the signal for this sort of management ship or whatever is controlling this drone. Is there anything I'm able to beam aboard to study further? There is not, unfortunately. I mean, you could blow it up and then, you know, take chunks of it on board. You could do that, but you're not able to get, like, say, a lock on their engine core or a lock on something that would be, shall we say, decipherable. And, and you said before when he checked originally, there's no life sign. So it's not like this ship itself is... A life sign. Correct. So the outside is metallic. Correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that we got that in the original scans. Um, I don't... I can't think of any other questions to ask other than having... That, or off your role. I mean... Um, yeah, I can't either. Because everything else I want to ask is more of a Svarja high long uh, about the mothership and or other ships coming towards us. But right. you can't if, really... If this thing is in, still in communication with its mother or node or whatever, they almost certainly understand what the situation is. Oh, that would be a good point. Can you detect if it's sending a distress signal? That, I would say, would involve an entirely separate task. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, um, I, can't, I think that's good for Lenaro. Yeah. Um, but if if he's able to get um, Hylong and or uh, Savarja to know where this other ship is, then that would be my next question, is to keep an eye on it, and if it or any of these other little ones start coming towards us, then we can start acting appropriately. I think the best course of action here is to retrieve the away team and this uh, ambassador or representative and head back to the fleet to regroup. 
Yeah, yeah. definitely re Yeah, that's what I was going to handle next. Okay. So, as you begin to tell Svarja this and tell the, uh, tell everyone that that's what you're going with, uh, Svarja does speak up and say, uh, Sir, are you sure it's safe for the away team to come up? I'm a little worried that the the drone out there might be hiding enough power to fire a shot or two. Well, if we beam the if we beam the the team back up along with this ambassador, we can remotely pilot the shuttle to come back up. If it fires on the shuttle, we end this ship. Very well, sir. And those of you on the away team, let's say for sake of argument, you have been led back to your shuttle via the same bubble transportation at this point, and uh, Lena has come with you. So you are so back you on the are... surface, you have free and open communication back up to the Lysithia. And um, the Lysithia will be trying to uh, get communication with them. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. able to talk to them no problem. And in fact, your oh, transporter you. chief uh, tells you that he has a very firm pattern lock. Uh, uh, so, like, come on, come on, is this... oh, sorry, no. Once we're back on the ship. This is Commander Ty. We're, we received. All right, here's the play. We are beaming you back up. We're going to remotely control the shuttle to come back up to us. Um, this ship up here has friends that aren't very far away, and we are going to get you out of there so that way whatever our new friends can do to protect themselves, and we are going to head back towards uh, uh, back towards the fleet and um, have this little talk between Ambassador and the Admiral. Question. Is that storm still coming? Is it still interfering with their, you know... Oh, no, that... That that passed hours ago. Uh, Lieutenant Scrim, is our is uh, Miss Lena here safe to in to uh, inhabit in our in Lysithia's environment? Well, they seem to be somewhat amphibian. We might need to flood a quarter or so, or set up some sort of pool in the hollow deck. But she should be fine for brief periods in the surface. Maybe a nice moisturizer. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but does the Lysithia have diplomatic suites? It doesn't yes, need. It I sure was just, does. I was about to suggest that. Uh, we'll prepare an aqua an amphibious uh, suite for you, Miss Lena. Please, uh, if it if you need anything else for your comfort, please let us know immediately. Uh, Lysithia seven to beam up. And uh, Beckett will kind of give his nod, so that way they'll give the transporter chief an okay, and he'll. Uh, also ask Lenaro to have an engineering team set up one of the diplomatic suites. All right. So. And as soon as they are on board, even before they get back to their duty stations, mm -hmm. um, we are going to um, head out of the system, going in a different direction than towards the fleet. And as soon as we are, uh, I guess, at a comfortable distance, we'll activate the cloak and then head back to the fleet. All right. What, what about, about the, the shuttle? shuttle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll have the shuttle pilot itself back up before we do that. Okay. Uh, so you have the choice of either waiting for Swan to come back up to pilot it her way, or you can have Kyrano uh, pilot it. Or you could have uh, our uh, our supporting NPC, Worsh. He could do it as well. Uh, I just need to know who's doing the role. Um... Yeah, might as well have a PC do it and have Swan do it as soon as she gets back up. Alrighty. Alright, so Swan, as you come back onto the bridge, I would like you to roll me a control and con, please. Difficulty 2. Okay. Uh, how much momentum do we have at the moment? You have two. Cool. I'll spend one of those for a third die. Very nice, you get two momentum. So, uh, the shuttle takes off, flies up out of the atmosphere and towards the Lysithia, 
And just as far as suspected, the drone ship does fire off a shot. Just one. But the good news, with your many successes, it is a difficulty four task to hit your shuttle. So it's unlikely, but I'll roll it anyways. Yeah, so yeah, it it misses so badly that they probably could have targeted you and, you know, still not hit anywhere close. Um, but the good news is that after it fires this last shot, uh, Sparger reports, uh, sir, there's zero power in the drone. I, I think it used the last of its reserves. I could well. take a sensor, sensor scan of it just to make sure, to see if it's still communicating. Okay. Uh, yeah, just uh, roll me a reason science and uh, difficulty zero here. Okay, so you get a momentum and yeah, this thing is just cold, dead metal. Captain. If we follow proper ice uh, sandboxing procedures, I would recommend bringing this drone on board. If we are indeed going to be engaging these uh caretakers in the future, then this might prove a very useful asset. What? There may have been what miscommunication. Is... It's it's a scale yeah, 4 yeah. ship. Right. Oh, 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 oh. I thought that the little drone was still around. Not oh, no, no, no. Thing. Oh, no, no. Bugged out. We could attempt oh, to tractor beam it. Right. We could attempt to tractor it with us. Um, um, and, and But no, your... Too. Margoth's role was to find out whether or not it's still communicating, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's not communicating at all right now. It is not. Then perhaps we could tractor it with us, Captain. Yes, but I'm still worried that eventually it'll be able to radio where we are at. That is my worry. We could use the we could attempt to flood its uh, its methods of communication with some sort of particulate that disrupts them. Uh, we could create a, a, some sort of uh, emission that would disrupt its communication. All right. I like that idea. Um, Margoth, if you would, please. Um, yeah, let's hook it with a tractor beam. We'll take it back with us, and um, uh, let's handle this with every kid glove we can and every precaution. Yeah? And back it look around the the, um, the bridge. Uh, Margoth, please rig the Bussard collectors to collect various uh, exotic particles from the local uh, Class T gas giant. We can flood them behind us, which should Very provide well, a suitable dampening. I mean, a uh, commander. All right. All right. So. You do all that. You collect some gas from the Class T. You use it to uh, make sure that this drone, if it has any bit of power left, its sensors are so flooded by extraneous information that it probably can't detect anything that's going on outside its hull. And we're going to cut back to the fleet. Uh, at this point, uh, let's say that we're back on the bridge. So, yeah. Uh, Rosazzo, you're detecting that the Lysithia is incoming. Protecting Lysithia. Ah, excellent. Hopefully it's good news. Uh, Captain, the Lysithia is bringing... is has something of uh, fair size in its tractor beam. Still scanning. Appears to be other ship. Unknown configuration. Another ship? Not... Yeah, and he's sort of like, D did the Breen come in here as well? Unknown configuration, no tactical signs or power signatures. Ship appears dead. Um, Beckett will hail the Amalthea. All right. So in that kind of hollow area, Mr. Beckett shows up. And Beckett. with kind of a... A weak smile. Uh, Mirthrin, uh, I'm sure by now you've figured out that I'm on my way back and I'm dragging something with me. Yes, it looks like a ship. Yeah, it's a long story, but we have 
pretty much made first contact with two species. One aggressive, one not aggressive. I'm taking this to mean we can't drop the Romulans off on the planet. Uh, no, and that's not the only reason why. So, um, if you would please alert the Admiral, we're on our way in, and we have someone that would like to talk to him. An ambassador from the not-aggressive species. Very well. And uh, heads up for when you get in sensor range, the Klingon bird of prey is on our side. I'm sorry, the what? You'll see when you get here. Uh, understood. Lysithia out. And uh, I will I immediately been, yeah. turn to Svarja and tell Svarja, there's a Klingon ship, don't shoot at it. What? You're never going to let this go, are you? Like, I could uh, I could save the entire galaxy, and you're still just going to go, hey, Svarja, you know that time? Sorry, sir. Uh, Svarja, you remember that time that you did save the entire galaxy? And he will look at her deadpan. Oh. I mean, if we're talking about my accomplishments now later um, um, and uh, yeah the Lysithia will just come back into the fleet formation uh, with this thing in tow Okay, so we're going to handle the engineering side of you guys picking apart the um, the caretaker drone uh, next session but we still have things I want to resolve in this session the first being um where would you be meeting this ambassador, Skull? And who would be in the meeting with you? Uh, let's see. Probably... Uh, I, I I would think probably the briefing room. Okay. Um, I would have myself, Zareed, uh, Fleet Security, uh, Drake, um, Merthrin and, and Beckett, I would suspect... And probably Cam, just because Cam is a good adjunct. Okay. Um, so Beckett, Cam, and Drake. Beckett, Cam, Drake, and Z Merthrin and Zareed. Okay. If you can find Zareed, drag her on. I will get Cam and Drake. And someone can pilot Cam since I will be playing the ambassador. And Beckett can talk to himself. <laughs> Alright, where is... She must still be under the Ophion crew somewhere. Oh god, she's tiny. Let's blow her up. Alright, there we go. Alright, is that everyone you want in the meeting? And I'll adjust it for the stream here. Uh, I'm missing Mirthrin, yeah, I think. Mirthrin. Oh, Mirthrin. That's right, sorry. Uh, Mirthrin, Mirthrin, Mirthrin. There you are. So let's put you over here. All right. So, Mirthrin, uh, the very first thing you notice, uh, besides the fact that there is a cilia of some sort, uh, when you walk into the briefing room, it's that immediately, because you are a Betazoid, uh, you are instantly able to communicate with the ambassador. It's almost like talking to a rather old friend. It's very familiar. It's... I dare say intimate. It it feels natural. And, and so, so I think like probably from the perspective of everyone else, they just sort of look at each other fu funny, but Mirthrin will sort of go, well, this is, this is different. Yes, hello. I am, I guess, Ambassador Lena. Who might you be? Who might you be? Captain, uh, Captain Mirthrin. Hmm. You appear to be one of the rare few in this crew that is able to communicate with me in my natural wavelength. Yes, uh, telepath. Yes, uh, turns out uh, telepathic species are somewhat in the minority in the Federation, but we do exist. Hmm. Well, it appears the others are staring. Perhaps we should get to the rest of the meeting. Oh, right. Yes, sorry. And he'll, so, he'll sort of turn his. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Uh, for, forgot I was speaking telepathically. No, by all means, that's a wonderful form of communication. Ambassador Lena, welcome aboard the USS Amalthea. I am Rear Admiral Barton Skull. This is, uh, by now, you've already met Captain Beckett, Captain Merthrin. Uh, representing uh, Starfleet the Diplomatics is Zareed, and my attache, Commander Cam. Uh, don't mind uh, Mr. Drake in the corner there. He is 
in charge of overall fleet security. It's his job to be a little bit paranoid. And then in all of your minds, you hear Lena say, it is a pleasure to be here, uh, Admiral Skull. I do believe that we have important things to discuss. Yes, there was a briefing about uh, the caretakers. Um, I haven't had a full chance to look over your briefing notes about them yet, Beckett, but they don't sound overly friendly. Through our... Uh, oh, go ahead. No. No, they, they are not. Uh, we attempted first contact with them. They would not speak to us, and a smaller ship left and sent a bigger ship, which uh, shot at the Lysithia. Uh, we responded by taking out its engines and its power, and uh, when we retrieved our shuttle, it took a shot at the shuttle as well. I see. Uh, where, where, where do you believe its home base is? Do we know where the... Um, I have been told by, uh, Master Chief Hylong and, um, uh, Svarja, they were able to track, um, communications that this little drone is sending to its parent ship, mothership, um, which was roughly 10 light years away from the planet that Ambassador Lena and her, her people, uh, call home. It's the other one that uh, High Long suggested we explore, I'm betting, right? Uh, of course it is, because, you know, things can't go our way. Naturally. Uh, okay. Uh, Mathurin will just sort of go, okay, mental notes, set up long term quarters for the Romulans. Ambassador um, Lena, um, you came with a request. I would. I would like. I have a suspicion uh, what it may be, but I would like to hear it from you, if you don't mind. Well, in seeing this grand vessel of yours, and seeing and hearing uh, what I've heard thus far from the minds of your crew, I understand that your fleet has taken rather grievous injuries, and your ships are in disrepair. That is uh, an accurate. Well, I and you must excuse me. I did not mean to pry, but it appears that some of the mines on the way here were, shall we say, almost like shouting, and it was hard not to overhear them. I understand that you may carry, and you must excuse me. I am trying to. Translated into terms I understand myself, you carry space station parts? That is correct. We were going to build an outpost uh, when we first left the wormhole. However, we have a long ways to go before we've reached the, that point, so they're currently allocated for fleet. Well, the idea which occurs to me is that if we were to use these parts to construct the outpost in the orbit of our planet, we would no longer have to worry about the caretakers, as it were. My species would be able to come and go as we pleased. Are you sure it's that simple? If the caretakers detect a... a significant amount of orbital activity they may just send more ships I am confident at seeing your fleet that you will be able to provide adequate enough security until the outpost is fully constructed I'm just going to look at Merthrin and Beckett and Drake thoughts gentlemen we could use all the help we can get, and a friendly planet from which to base our trip back home would be ideal. It's and from what I understand, to... technically, not that alien. It's always good to have a place to come back to. Uh, I dare say call home. 
And plus, from what my uh, my crew told me, this planet's really nice, other than the fact that there's not much of a uh, surface to it, other than water. Um, Beckett will kind of kind of laugh, uh, and we'd never run out of fresh water. Or al or edible algae, for that matter. This is true. What, what was the what was the uh, makeup of the other planet in the system? Uh, was a gas giant. Uh, not a good source of raw materials. We'd we'd be sacrificing a short term boon to the fleet for a long term base of operations. Hmm. Um, I I think that the benefits in this will outweigh the cost. Uh, I, and, uh, I do have questions, but they would be oh. questions that we'd have to ask among the captain staff only. Of course. No offense. Um, my other concern would be um, actually, I, I don't really think I have any other concerns that need to be brought up openly anyways. So Cam and Zareed kind of look at each other and nod, and they both stand. Uh, Ambassador Lena, I believe it is good to show you around uh, the Amalfia. Uh, if you would follow me, please. And Lena, uh, sensing where this conversation is going, uh, you know, nods and follows both Cam and Zareed out. So it is just the four of you, uh, unless Drake would go and play Shadow uh, to um, the guest. Yeah. Drake, um, uh, <laughs> Drake will make a comment about being uh, way, this conversation being way over his pay grade, and will excuse himself. Okay, so it is just uh, at the moment, it is just Mirthrin, Beckett, and Skull. And not for so, long. Skull's, I guess gonna, the... Skull's going to summon the other captains, I guess, because that makes sense. Okay. So as I get them, you can finish your thought there, Mirthrin. So I guess the immediate question is, as convenient as this would be for us, how much does the Prime Directive apply here? Because they seem more capable, or at least, theori at least theoretically so. They are, in fact, technically former denizens of Earth. Um, there is, uh, my concerns I needed to bring up is one, one thing that we hadn't talked about yet, and another is a question about those supplies for that station. So which would you like to hear first? Well, well let's hear the thing we don't know. Now that the rest of the captains are here, I'll just pass along a briefing pad to the rest of them to get them up to date. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, prayer but is Tuzon a uh he's Bajoran um, he is Bajoran of course <laughs> he is so my away team uh was presented with something um and told that this was how the um this species got to this planet and Beckett will tap some uh some things on a pad and put it up on the L car behind or on the screen behind Mirthrin and Panek. And it's a, an image of the orb of what did you call it? Tra I want to say orb of transportation, but I know that's not right. Transition. transition. Yeah. Orb of transition. So apparently this, uh, queen Marina, um, is in possession of that. That's fascinating, considering we're nowhere near the wormhole. Doubly so, considering that apparently it was on Earth originally. Um, the other thing my away team has brought to my attention is that the uh, flora um, that they did find on the planet also seems to have um, originated in or from Terra as well as Queen Marwina and her people. That's a lot to take in. Captain, 
Sim rubs her face. And, well, two things spring to mind. One, if the orb brought them here, it's conceivable it could bring us home. Assuming that is that's... not a possibility that I would put much stock in currently. There, nor orbs are notoriously uh, uh, inconsistent with their handling, as far as I, I'm aware. Well, this is a. An, I've heard reports of an orb of time from Deep Space Nine, which could send people back and was used to send people forward. Not impossible, especially for a Bajoran. Um, Well, it I'm sure it is a, a a possibility and something to be further looked into. I think we should base our attempts at getting home in more solid methods. With that in mind, then, why would we need to build a base which we then fly away from? I do not we, believe that, we should build one. That's our. That's why I asked all the, the captains here. We've been subpoenaed by the... What was it? The Maressa? Uh, the Maressa, yes. We've been subpoenaed by the Maressa to uh, provide defense against these caretaker species. Uh, their initial suggestion is that we build this the star base out, outside of... or in orbit of their... of the Class T giant. For one, it's good. on the plus side, it's good to have a home base from. We'd be able to repair the fleet a little more effectively with a proper star base. However, the downside is we would be losing the raw materials that the star base provides us right now, and we don't know what this uh, collect, what this, um, or we don't know what these. Uh, I keep wanting to call them collectors. caretakers. We want the we don't know what this caretaker response is going to be. Captain uh, Admiral, we cannot assume that the outpost will be a suitable deterrent, as we do are not aware of their current arm, uh, the current arm um, status of the car caretaker ar armada or assembly. There is another option. Yes. Yes. Uh, these ships uh, apparently they are entirely automated. So, um, either they are being sent from a central location, or they are a long-since-abandoned automated defense system, essentially. Either way, we could find out where they come from, uh, and either parlay with them, or find a way to, I don't know, remove the Marissa's planet from their database. And, in the, and then... We can, and then we can simply leave them to develop space flight at their own pace. We get to keep our space station resources and sort of help them with as little interference as possible. Agreed. We should understand the nature of this threat before we start. We prepare a proper countermeasure for it. Um, I had my crew scan. Um, everything about it. Obviously, we haven't taken it apart yet, but um, we have a, a general knowledge of their weapon systems, um, and as well as where at least this one's uh, home base or mothership is currently stationed at. Um, it, of course, is the other planet that we thought about putting the Romulans on. Lovely. Naturally, I make probably. notes to keep the, make notes to set up the Romulans for very long term storage. Uh, well, not necessarily. If we investigate the planet and can take care of the caretakers, then it still might be useful for the Romulans there. Uh, if mm -hmm. I can interject just as the GM real quick, um, something you may have overlooked was the fact that Queen Morina imparted that the caretakers affected an area of space. So there may so not be not. just the one. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yes. And but considering their hostility, they, I mean, they have consistently blocked the cilia from leaving their homeworld and 
did not initiate any attempt to communicate with us, just immediately started firing. I mean, this mm -hmm. is quite clear their intentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Captain Panek, what is the current state of the Ophion? We are effecting structural repairs. We have adequate supplies to do so. We just need the time in order to uh, apply them. Uh, if you do need us to enter into a combat, uh, combat stance, we can do so. There, again, there's another option here. We do have a bird of prey. We do, but I'm not entirely sure I trust the uh, fleet's in the fleet's future on a bunch of Klingons that we've yet to have proved their mettle, so to speak. Well, a covert scouting mission to said planet to gauge what we're looking at. I'd say that's a good way to prove their mettle. I mean, if if we're really that worried about it, I can also take the Lysithia under cloak as well. I was about to suggest the same, Admiral. With the Ophion standing back far enough within outside the system to provide fire support should it be needed. We also Is have the Tadarex Tadaric, um, cloaking device that we could rig up to a ship. It's yeah, not that's yet probably going to take a little while. I believe the Ophian yep. structure is still damaged, hull still damaged. Perhaps it would be better if we took the uh, May Yuan or the Red November outside of sensor range. To the Red the November yeah. is still undergoing refits for the disruptors. Yes, we're in the middle of bolting those disruptor banks on the front. And the May Yuan is, uh, has no communications array, so calling her in for fire support for the Lysithia would prove ineffectual. Agreed. I, I believe that the best course of action at the moment would be to ask Beckett and the... What was it? The Jock Paul? Uh, Captain Jaman. I'm going to... Jaman. Uh, Captain Beckett and Captain Jaman to proceed to this Class M planet under cloak for surveillance and potential interdiction uh, objectives, while the rest of the fleet rebases to be around the orbit of this of the Moresi homeworld. It's at least something more interesting to look at than just empty space right now, wouldn't you say? It would also give people a place to kind of recharge their batteries. Yes, well, see if um, the ambassador is willing to uh, let... Two, uh, two dozen people at a time, apparently there's a... Yes, well, beach holiday. Maybe two dozen... Done. We could also see if the um, if they had any um, technology that they'd be willing to share to maybe speed along the repair process for some of our ships. I'm hesitant to share technology at this stage. Uh, we don't want, while the Prime Directive is a perfectly okay with making first contact, there are several uh, clauses about sharing technology with a species, especially if it's only going to be used for uh, certain people. I want to get a better understanding of the Atlantean society before we openly share technology. I'll task well, to read in the diplomatic core to see what can be found on that front. I, I will also bring up that, uh, from what my away team told me, they are a very technologically advanced society. They knew that the Lysithia was in space and as well could... Uh, they can detect whenever these caretakers come into their space. So just because they don't have, uh, or they may not show that they have much space travel or ships, they are highly advanced. Not I'll so advanced enough to defend themselves, however. Well, they defended themselves rather well, but going on the offense doesn't seem their nature for whatever reason. Captain Tuzon, a delicate question, and I understand if you don't wish to answer right now. What are your, what is your uh, religious nature regarding the prophet? I was raised primarily on Earth, although I follow the prophets. I follow it loosely. I wonder if they'd be letting, interested in letting some of our Bajoran crewmen 
see if they can have an orb experience. Speaking, but that might be asking a little too much. Speaking on behalf of the Bajorans, it would definitely be a um, boost to our morale. I'll bring it up with the ambassador, but I can offer no promises. Understood. Well, Admiral, what what is their final say in regards to the outpost resources? The outpost resources will be kept in as they are for fleet and for fleet rebuilding until the threat of the caretakers could can be properly analyzed. I would very much it would be nice to extend an olive branch to our undersea friends, but for the time being our fleet our the needs of the fleet come first, but we will help these people however we can. All right. So with that, uh, we're just going to do some very quick housekeeping. Uh, so I'm just going to put us on the uh, ship map here. Uh, so first off, uh, this is an opportunity for you guys to repair up to two breaches. And uh, as a reminder, I will throw up the uh, breach repair mechanics, just so you remember what you're working with here. So... Uh, Important to note is that this will consume raw materials, which we are somewhat tracking. And why don't we start with the Ophion? So, Ophion, uh, what breaches do you want to attempt to repair first? Um, definitely some structural breaches. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, that is going to involve a roll. So what I would advise is for your engineer to be making those rolls. Um, and the way it works is uh, if you are coordinating uh, repair crews, it is presence engineering. And if they're doing the work themselves, it is control and engineering. Uh, the difficulty here is a two. And I will say that this succeeds at cost. And what that will mean for you all is that it will either um, take additional materials or it will take additional time. What? Who is my engineer here? Uh, that would be me. All right. What? Which of those uh, are you more proficient in? Would you be coordinating um, or doing them yourself? No, he's much more doing it himself. Could Mito uh, assist with the repairs? Um. I'm hesitant to do um, assists on this because I want to sort of give, um, you know, the the chief engineers of each ship their kind of spotlight, if it were. Um, so let me think on that more. But for now, let's just do straight rolls and see what happens. Um, is the and, ship rolling uh, anything? No, the ship is not rolling anything. This is just right. purely the chief engineers and how well they're doing. And are we, uh, is it going to be an extended task or just straight rolls? Uh, let's just do a straight roll, because uh, that's easier to keep track of. Well, this is going to suck. <laughs> All right. You do have momentum. I will point that out. Um... How do you get rid of it? I'm trying to figure out. Uh, <laughs> you have to uh, drag the token uh, from your card deck. And then you, yep, you delete it. You got it. Yep. I figure since we've had so many scene changes since then, I don't yeah, have yeah, any. Yeah, you probably still don't have it. All right. So are these extended tasks? These are not, unfortunately. I, I, I asked that already because I'm set up like you are as far as extended tasks go. Uh, it's almost like he chose them not to be for that reason. <laughs> well, no, Probably. I mean, it's, it's it's mostly a housekeeping thing. Like, if we did extended tasks for everything, it would just be a lot of rolling. Um, and, uh, how many, what was the difficulty you said? The difficulty is two. Um, does, the, it, being the chief engineer on my ship bring that down any, or no? No. Okay. Then I will spend a point of momentum to get a third dice. Okay. Uh, applicable focus, yes. Mm-hmm. Because I've got tons. 
Um, and let's wait a year for this roll to come through. Oh, wow. Nice. You repair the hell out of one breach of structure. The mighty fine uh, the structure uh, is nice and solid. Mm-hmm. And not only that, I got what three momentum to put back into the pool. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you can attempt to do one more repair. Uh, I will do it again, and I will spend one of those uh, momentum I just got. Okay. Would it? See, I'm wondering if we should take uh, repair another structure, or just finally get rid of the uh, engineering, uh, the engine breed. Um. Well, I mean, I got us one back, but uh, what are the negatives for what we have? I'm unsure. I know the structure prevents us from using. Yeah, MVAM. so until USG. structure is fully repaired, you cannot MVAM. Right. And until engine engine is repaired, we can't QSD. Correct. And that's the only negative for engines, correct? At the moment, yes. You only have the one breach. Okay, so I would say let's do it to structure. Right. You're the chief engineer. Um, I'm going to put the holes in my ship back together, then, if it's my choice. So both of those will be for structure. Very nice. You are down to two breaches for the Ophion. All right. And I got a, and I uh, got back the momentum I spent. You did so indeed. we're at six. I think. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So up next, uh, we're going to go to the Amalfia herself. So Frypack, or Freepack, I'll say it right eventually. Um, what would you be focusing on? I mean, I know you only have uh, breaches to sensors, but just keep in mind, the only way to replace your sensors is to take it from the outpost's uh, supplies. Yeah, but, I mean, that's what they're currently earmarked for, so that's definitely... Unless I'm told otherwise, I'm going to use them, because uh, there's a Ferengi rule of acquisition that says... Why ask when you can take? Okay. So, you would be doing the same uh, control and engineering, difficulty two. And I will say you only get the one attempt here because of just how massive the Amalthea is. Oh, I have got the wrong sheet open. I was about to make the roll on Margoth. I mean, you'd have better luck rolling with Morgoth than if Panek was rolling engineering. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Ooh. Okay. So, I'm going to say that the complication, and I'm going to let you decide the outcome here, you can either use one-fourth of the station's sensor uh, earmarked supplies to repair one breach, or you can simply find that this work is so in- extensive that using the station sensor arrays would not be adequate enough to replace the entire ship. So it basically the thing is you either spend one fourth of the supplies to repair one breach, or you simply make no progress and realize that you have to look elsewhere for your sensors. What do you guys think is the better option here? Well, we do have a Romulan to Deridics. I could attempt a jury rig. Uh, their sensor suite with airs to kind of mash them together. We also have the industrial replicators that probably take more time, but we could replicate the parts. I mean, if anything, right. a Telshiar sensor array is probably pretty good. All right. Um, I'll say that we they they are not enough to. 
affect uh, repair the entire or, or, or affect repairs. But we would need more material. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to go to Lysithia. And uh, Lysithia, uh, your chief engineer, uh, I believe that is Prier. So Prier, uh, or I guess Lenaro. Uh, which, uh, which breaches are you going to go for? You have two attempts here. Um, probably try to repair the engines as best as possible. Okay. So, control. Uh, well, let me ask this. Are you leading the repairs or are you doing them yourself? Um, I'm going to do the control engineering, whatever one that one is, because that's Doing a power. it yourself. <laughs> that's a power one for me. Alrighty. I'm going to uh, spend one of those momentum. And would warp field dynamics work? If you were repairing the engine breaches, yes. That's what I'm going to do. Very nice. You repair one breach to the engines. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Nice. You guys are knocking these out of the park. So, uh, you are down to just one breach to the engines on the Lysithia. Not everyone's knocking it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> well, almost. Almost. Um, so up next, oh, well, I guess real quick, uh, I need to check in. Uh, are you guys taking this all from the, uh, the, uh, your own sort of, uh, spare parts? The or Ophion are is. you coordinating it amongst the fleet? The Ophion's definitely using their own parts. Okay. So you're down to 11 breaches worth of supplies. Uh, what is the Lysithia using for its? Um... See, we had one uh, breach worth of supplies in our cargo. Um, well, then, I mean, you've plugged up two breaches, so that means we're going to have to pull some from somebody. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess we'll keep the one, because I rolled, like, ass for how much extra we had. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see if we can pull two from somewhere else. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just do a quick scene. Uh, let's have Beckett call up Panek. See, and maybe relieve some of the tension from last session. I would have rather gone through the, uh, the, the Derek's, but okay. Okay. Well, I, I think this is, um, a, this is a good bonding moment. But if you want to do the Derek's, uh, we can do the Derek's. Uh, I think at this point, that would probably be the best bet. Okay. For now. All right. So we'll say uh, you take supplies from uh, the Dederics then. And uh, I will note that somewhere in my notes. Benek just looks sadly in his ready room. <laughs> <laughs> at the empty, at the empty uh, comm console. Oh, poor Panek. Oh, Is that an emotion that I'm getting from Panek? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, gentlemen, uh, we have reached our time limit, so let me go ahead and end the session there officially. Oh, what about um, the May 1? And it's oh, well, let's uh, I'll do the rolls for them off stream. Um, so let me end the stream there, and we'll still talk as players and GM. So stream, thank you so much for watching, and we will see these guys next week. Bye-bye.